Family, my name is Joe Metal, and you're watching Breakfast Daily on City TV. Keep watching, don't go nowhere. Manifest your glory as we come before your presence. Hello, everybody. This is Enyanyam. Keep watching City TV Breakfast Daily. My name is Julietia Asantua Asante. Keep watching Breakfast Daily on City TV. Good morning, Ghana. Good morning, world. You're into into the Breakfast Daily on City TV. Stone Boy says so. Keep it locked. Don't log off. Beep. Hi, 
Good morning. My name is Michelle Atta. You're tuned in to Breakfast Daily on City TV. Good morning. Good morning. Yes. It is officially the first Monday um, of the last month of the year. Okay. So, uh, 4th December is the 4th or 5th? Mm, we are in December. Ah, I'm, I'm in a hurry. Why are you in a hurry for December to end, huh? <laughs> on Christmas to come all, already. <laughs> anyway, so good morning, guys. And, good um, morning. <laughs> so we had an amazing weekend. Uh, Saturday, there was um, Strictly Come Dancing. Yes. Strictly Come Dancing was fun. Every individual there was dancing. DJ Every Armani, person was dancing. DJ thank Armani. you. Thank you guys mm. at home for joining us. You made our weekend amazing. Yes. I mean... It was such a great way to enter the I, I think the that, month that was the love. first time in the last how many years or so that I've actually danced and I really, really Aww. enjoy dancing. Aww. And it was fun. It was yeah, fun. It was it so was much good. fun. And thank you all guys for coming out to support us. It mm -hmm. was at uh, the Elisa Hotel. Yeah. So uh, really excited about that. Now, there are more events, you know, this December. December so yes. be watching out for those events. December to remember amongst others. Yeah, that's so, on the 24th. You yeah. don't want to miss it. We all, I like the white, whole white and jeans. White and jeans. You know, just white having top fun with your favorite artists. Mm. I mean, it's, it's just amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. For me, December is the month of love mm. and it's the month ah. of gratitude. Mm. Right? So it's the month of just reflecting on all the good things mm. that have gone on the year. Because it's easy to complain about things didn't go your way, you know, disappointments, mm -hmm. all these things, but just sitting and reflecting on all the things that, that went right, all the people mm. who did right by you, all the great memories you had and, and mm. experiences. It's, it's, it's quite refreshing. Definitely refreshing. And I want to say a big thank you to, um, what's his name? Prosper. Prosper. You do a lot for me. You do a lot for me. You have no idea. <laughs> so Prosper of a sharp grooming in Osu. <laughs> so me. I get a free haircut. Because I've agreed to to give him a digit of your number every time I get <laughs> every time I get a haircut. You're so silly. yesterday I gave him zero. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was that way. Zero zero two three three two. <laughs> I'll continue from there. So we'll prosper, you look sharp, beautiful. You Thank look you beautiful. very much for the haircut. And uh, I, I must say, you. I mean, it's a lucrative business selling you. <laughs> it's fun. Selling your number is really good. It's, it's good business. Silly. I think, you know, Nanajua Sakode does the same thing. Really? Yeah, she also sells your number. That's not good. Yeah, you no, guys, it's a that's, good not, thing. that's not good. Don't do it's that. Don't thing. do this at home, okay? It's not good. I know Alan good is the number one person who does it. Like, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> we went to go for it. He was literally like, you know this lady. I know her. And I'm like, the Alan. The the MPB Congress. <laughs> what are you doing, Alan? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we live good in good morning. times. We thank we thank God for, for don't life and we thank God your for your life. Ones, please yes, don't, don't do that. Don't, don't do this at home. <laughs> Nobody your number there. I need a haircut, you understand? It's good. Anyway, uh, but so, it's good. It's, it's a great it's a great time to be alive. Hmm. Saturday was World AIDS Day, yeah. first December. Hmm. Uh, today is uh, International Day of Persons, Persons with, with Disability. Disability. Hmm. disability hmm. You know, so it's important for us to be mindful of all these things. Hmm. I think uh, I read somewhere last week that we're going to provide funds for um, female entrepreneurs with disability. Yeah. And I think it's about time yes, it's that we start giving um, um, the, the disabled amongst Rebecca us. The first lady, Rebecca Kufour, yeah. has set aside some money some for, for doing the same. So yeah. I think that's a good thing. It's a really good thing. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's about time. Because most it's disabled people just want access to economic opportunities, right? Mm. So they don't want to be begging in the streets. Mm. But some of us, we don't check our... our um, the myths we have. Some mm. people think that if you buy something from a disabled person, you're automatically going to be disabled as well. Mm. Right? So all this um, discriminate, discrimination that we, 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 we have towards them, mm. it's really, really terrible. And yeah. I think we need to create more awareness. Yes. That, so, um, of course, like it's always said, and it's actually quite true, that a disability is not an ability. Yeah. I mean, there are many, many things they can actually do. do. Yeah. You know, and it could happen to any one of us. Right. Exactly. It can happen to any one of us, and we should still provide an enabling environment for all human beings hmm. to thrive. Yes. So today is a very important day. We celebrate this day with you. Um, there are laws put in place that at all uh, public 
facilities, there should be, you know, uh, avenues for people friendly. living with this. It should be disabled friendly, yeah. you know, for the construction. Mm -hmm. But we do know many government uh, institutions or uh, installments that do not have same. So it's yeah. actually quite funny that we live in such a country. But yeah. we hope that the right things would be done. So I think it's important. We need to recognize the fact that as much as we say equality, I mean, some would argue on the basis of equality, that we are all equal, so let there be equal opportunities for all. But we need to be mindful of the fact that being in a minority and people assuming this disability is an inability, they are not as exposed or they do not have the equal opportunities that we all have. Yeah. So if they are, you are going to look for a job, one, one person is disabled, the other person is not more often than not, the job is given to the person who it's may not be disabled. Uh -huh. yeah. So it's important that a form of affirmative action is taken. Mm -hmm. Let's be more positive about this. Um, your 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 favorite line. Let's be more deliberate about <laughs> about these sorts of things. So it's very important. So as employers out there, as state institutions, amongst others, let's just look at you know, persons living with disabilities and recognize their intellect and what actually they can contribute. Because mm -hmm. trust me, many can actually contribute a lot. Yeah, and I mean, for any business, mm. right, whether private or public, mm. you need diverse perspectives on mm. the table, right? So you need more women, you need more just different kinds of people who mm. will allow you see a, a demographic that you don't have any, any, any idea what mm. they do, who they are, how they operate. So if you bring, if you, if you hire a person with disability, it's not a social impact thing or a selfless thing. It's actually a selfish thing to help your company get ahead. Because mm. that person is coming in with a unique experience, a, a unique um, mm. idea mm -hmm. that no one else at the table might mm -hmm. have. And that uniqueness might just be mm. what your company needs mm. to thrive. And sometimes we don't really see these things from that perspective. Mm. Okay. So um, I think, I think we, we can... Um, we, you, ha you had a few quotes while we were yeah, still talking yeah, yeah, about yeah. persons I had, with I had some quotes that I wanted to share. Yeah. Uh, it would be with, nice with if our, we could see a few uh, of them on the screen as yeah, well. Yeah, let's just see one. Uh, I, again, I said this, we're celebrating the month of love, the month mm. of gratitude. So we'll start off with this week will be the week of gratitude. So mm. each day we will have a quote that will help us reflect and mm. just be grateful um, to be alive, mm. be grateful for all the people around us, be grateful for everything, right? Mm. So we'll just share one quote mm -hmm. each day of the week. Maybe next week will be the, the week of love, mm. but I think it's important to start out with gratitude. Let's so let's take a look gratitude. at that quote. Okay, so this says, do you want to read it for us? Learn to be thankful for what you already have. You pursue all that you want. This is coming from Jim Ron. So I'll say it again. Learn to be thankful for what you already have while you pursue all that you want. Now, many a times, of course, we are not very grateful. We do not recognize what we have simply because we have it. We do not take, uh, or we are not mindful of the fact that there are many other people who actually do not have it, you know. We take a lot of things for granted. Mm -hmm. We take, even, even, even walking around, we take for granted. We'll complain that hey, we don't have a car, I don't have a car, I don't have this, I don't have that. Even those who have a car want bigger cars amongst yeah, others. Yeah. So appreciate what you have. It's very, and, and very important. And I think important. it's so easy for us to forget. Because mm. we take what we have for granted. Mm. So let's say I have um, tea. And I'm, I'm, I'm obsessing to get um, chocolate. And I'm not actually understanding that what I have is great. It's a great starting point. And in, mm. it, it's in being grateful for what I have that I can now build on to get what I want. Mm. But if we completely disregard what we have and we're constantly looking for what we don't have, then we are never content and yeah. we don't have a sense of direction. Yeah. So it's, it's always important to acknowledge what you have. I mean, there's always been this story about um, a person getting so sad at himself, at his life, that he has, he has lost he doesn't have the job he wants. He doesn't have the sort of wife he wants amongst others. So he's trying to commit suicide. He feels like he doesn't have anything. Mm -hmm. And as he's committing suicide, there's a man looking at him down there while he's trying to hang himself. Mm -hmm. And the man is just shaking his head. And he's like, please, I'm asking your permission. When you die, can I have your shoes? Just Because the man is just barefooted, just looking at him. Wow. Like, really? I, have, I don't even have shoes on my feet, yeah. you know? And there's also another man who doesn't have shoes, wanting to end his life because of that. And there's a man 
who is crippled looking at him like, really, at least you have feet. Have feet yeah. You know, so it goes on and on. Just be really appreciative yeah. of what you have. There's nothing wrong with pursuing what you sure. want, but be appreciative of what I you have. I think that's excellent. Now, mm. something happened over the weekend. Mm. Um, GIJ. Mm -hmm. Students were complaining that they yeah. were not being allowed to take exams mm. because yeah. the administrators said they did not pay their fees in full. I mm -hmm. think the minimum is supposed to be 60% or yeah. something along those lines. So, um, Wilberforce and I have um, Philip Kwame Saba with us, who is a um, concerned student, level 300 student at GIG. He's going to help us understand exactly what's going on at the school, how all this happened, and the mm. way forward. Today's Monday. Are they back in school? Are they going to write the exams? Good morning. Uh, good morning. How are you? I'm, I'm good. Good, good, good. What, what exactly is going on at GIJ? How did it happen? Um, actually, um, yesterday, um, level 300 and 400, we normally write our papers on weekends. Okay. Um, so, as usual, um, Saturday, um, level 400 and 200, we wrote our first papers, and then we came out to meet our friends who were not able to write due to one reason or the other, mm -hmm. and we asked what really happened. And uh, they explained that all the other, oh, whatever happened then. Sunday, some of the agri students, or some of concerned check, check, students. Check, tell, tell us exactly what the, what the explanations were. Right. That you uh, at the, at the okay. Ghana Institute of all right. Ghana. So there were different folds of people who were not able to, to write their exams. Um, one, those who were not able to complete the 60% uh, payment of the school fees, mm. uh, or the 100% payment of the fees. And then people, is it supposed to be sixty percent or hundred percent? Um, continuous students were supposed to pay sixty, and the fresh students were supposed 100%. to pay hundred percent. Okay. Yeah. Some were expected to pay hundred, and some were expected to pay eighty. Okay. Actually, so uh, there and this is for people, the new students. Yes. Okay. So these people couldn't write because they couldn't meet that. Even though some paid seventy percent and seventy five percent of the fees, okay. they were not able to um, partake in that. And this is for the new students. Yes. So you're supposed to pay either eighty percent or hundred percent. Yes. Now, there were people who paid 70, 75, yes, and the administrator said no. No, they're not going to take part in okay. the exams. And then there were some people who couldn't pay anything at all. And then over the years, this has been repeating itself. And uh, there have been provisions made anytime we write exams. I've been in school for three years now. Uh, first year and second year, if you're not able to pay your fees, um, there is a room allocated for all these people, and they, they sit in and write their paper. And uh, after they, they settle their fees, and it's very unfortunate, this very, being the very first semester, this is uh, showing off. Uh, we understand, uh, like, it's an issue that needs to be. The, the director spoke about this during the DEBA, that there are several changes that will be part of the school. But we are thinking if there should be a change, it should take a, a gradual process. It shouldn't be something that should just come um, on the very first day of, uh, of this examination. Uh, so we, we had a, a peaceful walk yesterday. Uh, some, of, uh, some of our friends were not able to write. We were there agitating that uh, it's either they allow everybody to write or no one will write at all. And uh, mm. the police came in and the management called police in and some issues were explained and they cancelled the paper that was supposed to be taken in the evening. That's for level 400 and the master students. They cancelled those, those papers. And then um, today we are hoping the SRC president, we met the SRC president yesterday actually, and then he made mention of meeting management today on the issue mm. to see if he can lobby for students to take part in the exams. And uh, this just early this morning, we had a, a, a media release from the school that those who are in good standing to write the paper will be the only people that will write the paper. So they have taken that stretch position that no one will write the paper if not registered. Okay, so, to be fair, sorry, mm -hmm. quickly. Um, in, in all fairness to the registrar, mm -hmm. or, okay. yes, in all fairness to the registrar, there was the initial thing. There's mm -hmm. this long-standing tradition or rule in the school that uh, continuing students pay 60%, mm -hmm. freshers will pay 80% yeah. before registration. Yeah. That's fine. And um, before exams, are you supposed to complete the full payment? Um, before second semester exams, you're supposed to complete full payment. Before second, second semester, semester exams. exams. Fantastic. Yeah. And before the exams, the registrar warned you. Was it the registrar or the rector? The rector. The rector warned yeah. you. And the portal was open. Uh, actually, it's an electronic registration. Yeah. Um, so the portal was opened many times for us to register. But there is this position that no matter how many times the portal is open, some of our friends cannot actually raise the money to pay us at that time because some are waiting for the student's loan mm. to, to do their payment and some are on scholarship. Mm -hmm. And the scholarship firms um, give them letters actually that they will settle the fees and other things. So even though we think maybe it's not right enough, we, we are at fault and maybe students who are unable to pay is a demand in the mm -hmm. handbook mm -hmm. that before you'll be able to write exams, you have to settle your fees and all that things. 
we, we are pleading with management to add a woman face to every situation, though it's, it's, it's supposed to be so. We're supposed to settle our responsibilities as far as we're enjoying the right. Um, but we are pleading with management to add women face to it, and that is what we are not getting. But how long did you actually, did you sit down with management, like maybe a couple of months ago, um, to say this is what's happening, we know that th these are the new changes, or this just happened over the weekend where students were being reactive? Okay, so SRC president had been part of council, council mm -hmm. meetings, and then he has been... Um, lesson with students, with management, how things should go. Mm -hmm. And uh, just, no, uh, the issue is that over the years, we, we normally, I'm not trying to compare the different administrations mm -hmm. over the years, but mm -hmm. the issue is that over the years, when these issues come up, people with that fear and hoping that they won't write the exam, we settle our fees. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, there's a, this few number of people, about 50 or 100 people, that will not set, settle the money before the end of the very first semester, hoping that the second semester they will pay before the completion of the academic year. Mm. So these people, there is an arrangement that they, they write somewhere and their papers are kept till they settle the fees before it's attended to. Mm -hmm. So we are anticipating that the same thing will happen this year, just for it not to Did you just time. have 50 students? Was no. this over just about 50 students? or Because yeah. the school is also, uh, it has to be self-sustainable. Sure. Mm. Right? And they need everyone to at least pay so that they can run the school well. Uh, so if, let's say, a couple of years ago you had 50 and the numbers, you know, keep, keep rising, then mm. you're like, okay, people are taking the test. They are not paying for it. Mm. How are we going to sustain this school if students are not paying? Um, actually, there was a, a book opened yesterday by one uh, Master students, the president of the Grasak, Grasak mm -hmm. president Martin, okay. the uh, Graduate Students Association. Yes, mm -hmm. so they they were actually calling for students who were not able to register to to come and fill the form. And about us at level three hundred and four hundred, about one hundred students were not able to settle their fees. And some people paid their fees after the registration period. Mm -hmm. The portal was open to a particular time when we are not able to pay. They add a penalty, automatic penalty mm. that you need to pay to, uh, before you do. And some students actually paid after the portal was closed. That was 21st November. Some people paid the money, the full payment that was supposed to be paid. Some paid on Friday, which is believed management said they've paid after registration. So there's no way that they can register. So some of these issues are there. Some were able to pay their fees in full, but left with SRC dues. Some were able to pay their f f fees in full with SRC dues, but left with penalty, 150 cities to pay. And they are ready to pay, but the portal will not be open for them to register again. Hmm. And hmm. these are the issues we are pleading with management. So m moving, moving so. forward, what would you like to see? Looking, I mean, in all fairness, mm. just like Jeff was saying, the school will need funds to run Definitely. its activities, Definitely. in fact, to run, to administer everything that goes on in the school. Sure. And also some students may genuinely be facing some hardships. Mm. And we also cannot lose sight of the fact that habitually some students whether or not they have the money may, might want to put it in one investment or another sure. but there's some some genuinely yeah, do not have the money to pay at that point in time mm -hmm. students S sltf student loan trust fund they're having issues right now as we speak mm -hmm. uh, scholarships are not coming as promptly as they should so there are genuine problems yeah. so moving forward what would you hope to see um, looking forward we know that the, we believe we understand that uh, the school management always get money to fund things internally. The money that we, they get internally is what they use to administrate the school. So fine, um, there, there, there should be a change. It's a responsibility of students to pay their fees. Hmm. Yeah, it doesn't matter, it's a right to education. Uh, we, we are expecting management, we are pleading with management if they can take this very first semester as a case study for us. We now understand why these issues are coming up and the need for us to pay our fees more. People are now getting, we are now getting more clearer. Mm. So if at least this semester they can allow our friends who have not settled their bills to just write as it's been done. And looking forward, they should, they should keep stressing on it that from next semester, this thing will not repeat itself. I think going forward, we should, we should also address it. And subsequent years, the issues of this will not happen. Because the exams are already here, yes. so it's a bit yes. difficult to... But, but to the thing is, uh, let now. me just read an excerpt from the uh, press release, the media mm. release uh, by the school. Um, it's dated Sunday, November uh, December 2nd, 2018. GIJ is open and proceeds with exams. And they said here, uh, like in most universities, students are required to pay fees and register at the beginning of the semester. Now, management offered students an opportunity to settle their fees by extending the deadline um, several times from end of September to October mm -hmm. to November. 
So they actually tried to meet the students halfway. They extended it three times. Yeah. Right. Isn't that enough? Because now they are also saying they are going to they are going to acquire the sixty percent for for students who are already in the school and the eighty percent. So it's, it seems as though they feel as like they've met you guys halfway, sure. and there's not much they can do. Yeah, uh, actually, they've met us halfway. They have. Said, yes. You agree? Yeah. But the one other issue too is that mm -hmm. some students who are concerned. The, I think in in the leadership structure there has been some miscommunication somewhere, or there has been break of. Uh, feedback from somewhere, maybe from the SRC or management somewhere about. Mm -hmm. uh, because many students, I know friends, who actually wrote a letter to the SRC, and uh, some wrote it to the registrar, and the registrar assures them that it's something will be done about it. Mm -hmm. And they were relaxed for about a month or for about some two months. They were relaxed that since their letters were with the registrar, they, there is definitely a way... Who has also responded that something will be done about but it. Yeah, isn't something being done about it, postponing it for up to three months? <coughs> that that well, seems like something so that's been the, done. The letter was given to the registrar, and the registrar assured some of, the, some of them that they will look at it. Mm -hmm. And even as at Friday, a, a friend told me that the, he called the registrar in the morning, mm -hmm. and the registrar said, OK, he, 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 she's looking at it for him. Just for the guy to come on Sunday and wasn't allowed to write. Okay. So I think since the, paper, the letter was given to the register about some two or one months earlier, mm -hmm. I think we should, they should have called the students who were affected that, no, your letter is here, but we can't do anything about it for you. Ah. So we look at how we raise funds to settle. So as it stands right now, if students are able to pay the required amount, students will be allowed to continue as, the examinations. As, as at now, the portal is not open. Mm. So if they and open so the they, portal right now, if will they, students be satisfied? Not all of them will be satisfied. Because if some will still, not, some be able still to not be pay. able to pay. Looking Sadly, there will always be people who will not be able definitely. to pay. Sadly, that uh, will be the situation. Sure. So then what will be the way forward for those students? Should the school say, would it be, a, would it be fair for you as a student, mm -hmm. level 300, you've been in school three years, mm -hmm. would it be fair, in your opinion, that mm -hmm. they should open the port the school should open the portal so that those who have paid mm -hmm. post all these demonstrations, mm -hmm. for want of a better word or a better description, once they open the portal, those who are paid will be able to register and examinations will continue. Would it be fair? It would be fair to those who have paid and those who can pay before that time. Mm. But there are some that will not be able to pay. And the issue here now also is that there are some level 400 and diploma two students who they have this semester and this semester to complete the school. Mm -hmm. And there is this new reform from management that there will be no receipts in GIG when you fill the paper for, excuse me, for the very first semester. Mm you retake the paper. So mm. you have to wait for one year wow. to write the paper. So that means the level 400s will not be able to write this particular semester paper. Should they pay next semester to take part in the second semester exams? They need to wait 2020, as their French graduate 2019, they need to wait 2020 to write the paper with the level 400s that will be mm. in level 400 at that time. And so these are some of the issues that students are looking at, that, yeah, definitely I'll pay the fees before leaving the school. Mm -hmm. So why... and the retake issue is also another problem that we need to look at. Mm -hmm. I think you need to look at that. The yes. SRC needs to take it up with uh, the school's council on sure. that particular one yeah. because um, it's very unfair for you mm -hmm. to have a situation, a situation where you are not allowed to uh, reset a paper in the interim. You have to wait and for sit with year. your juniors. Yes. Among. It's That's really not the crazy. best. It doesn't help anyone. I don't know why any school would want to adopt such a, a hard policy. Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem to work well for many people. Mm -hmm. So please, the, the, the administrators of the school need to be aware that there are some situations that, or, you know, a person might be at a particular point in time. You might be faced with a personal situation that will not allow you to write an exam yeah. or fail an exam, no matter how smart you are. Mm -hmm. So it's important that there's a, an arrangement for reset. I, I agree. And I yeah. think in as much as we want the school to run, we want the schools to be sustainable, mm. We are not only teaching students um, IQ, we're also teaching them emotional intelligence, right? Mm. And emotional intelligence starts from us, the administrators. Mm. So, like you said, there should be a bit of humanity, humanity in all of this. Let's, let's have a bit of empathy in the mm. way we engage the student body, mm. right? Um, without paying, you can't get your diploma anyway. Yeah. Mm. So no one wants to spend four years in a school without the certificate. So whatever happens, they will have to pay for it before they leave. So let's, let's, let's keep all this in mind. But thank you very much. Mm. Philip Kwame Saba, who is a level 300 student at Ghana Institute of Journalism. And you at home, too, for being with us. Remember, we want to hear from you, so always use the hashtag breakfast.
Breakfast Daily and the WhatsApp line? 055 And we are your lovely host, Jifa. Okay, I'm Atam. And I'm Isaac Over Force Mensa. News Review is next. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> which Ghanaian athletes are performing at the highest level, from football to athletics to boxing and so much more. Get the analysis, the updates, and all the news on your favorite sports figures on the tracker every Monday at 10.30 a.m. Only on City TV. Breakfast Daily on CCTV. Thank you so much for being with us. Now we're going to start a news review, starting with the newspapers, then we'll look at some online stories. So we'll start with the Daily Graphic. Daily Graphic says here, delivery at prayer camps causing death of women and babies. Mm. That's terrible. That story is on page 60. You know, a lot of people go to prayer camps mm -hmm. when, when they're sick and they yeah. wait till the very um, last moment to go to the hospital when it's too late. So in as much as we are religious people, we also need to, you know, do the right thing and go to the, to the hospitals. Our Mary wins Best Emerging Company Award. That story is on page 20 of the Daily Graphic. Man Crado, Elders Not Land Guards, Gomuafete Chief. That story is on page 55 of the Daily Graphic. NDC flag bearer aspirants petition Rawlings complaining about they complain about high filing fee. That story is on page 16. Now, finally, published broadbait report. President directs Ministry of Information. That story is on page three of the Daily Graphic. So we have a lot of stories here for you. Um, and if you want to read more uh, on these stories, please take a look at the Daily graphic okay now let's look have. at the chronicle the chronicle is saying uproar in ndc over killer fees all but mahama hold crunch meeting in accra uh, maybe out of solidarity maybe president mahama should have joined them <laughs> to join in that the, particular one his, so, his, his competitors yeah he should have joined them to complain about the, the fees just solidarity <laughs> so a bistec royal has conan sign contract for development of Takara reports and a full story is on page 7 this morning also uh Ochehine of cross swords and finally we have to bite the bullet on electricity tariffs another story here before we go page 8 and 9 of the chronicle has a story of Sogli council defense Togbe afede so that's what we have this morning on the front page of the chronicle Okay, let, let's take a look at the New Crusading Guide. The New Crusading Guide says here, for price reduction at Shell service station. That's great news. That story is on page 7. P PMMC lies exposed. Hmm. Stories on pages 3 and 10 of the New Crusading Guide. Eventually, we have to look at the back and forth between PMMC and uh, Ghana Standards Authority. Mm. Because, yes, on uh, who has the, the legal right for mandate the for valuing and assaying gold. Yes. So, uh, oh. We we'll follow those that. stories. Yeah. Lives in danger at Pram Pram as the Greater Accra Regional House of Chiefs um, delays ruling of chieftaincy matter. Now, Kaswa Police Crime Officer stands accused. And finally, will pay Bagbin's filing fee. That's coming from the NDC executives. Now let's take a look at the Ghanaian Times. The Ghanaian Times says GIJ closed down. Students are uh, demonstrating. You know, so that's what we have on the front page of the Ghanaian Times. The full story is on page 16. But uh, the school has come out to say that we have not closed down the school. GIJ has not been closed down. Examination shall continue. 
Construction of dock facility at Takade Port starts in January. Four stories on page 27 this morning of the Ghanaian Times. And finally, Dagbon Youth March in Support of Roadmap. And President Orders Justice Brobe Commission Report to be published. Page 18 has that story. Okay. Now let's take a look at the informer. The informer says here, uh, Gold Coast Refinery begins full-scale operation as Ghana Outdoors first hallmarked gold bar. That's what mm. we're talking about, the, the G yeah. GSC, well, Ghana Standards Authority. PMC should be the uh, ones to look I'll at. I'll that one. That story is on page five uh, in the informer. Morning, a jack. Okay, morning, a jacko snaps Akofado, still peeved over dismissal. I think that's a bit of a stretch. I don't think anything like that happened. But anyway. that story is on page four. Arrest Kum Chacha now over a murder of two Kumasi based journalists. That story is on page five. And finally, a Siedun Ketia mocks Rawlins, insinuates Swedro declaration is antidote to four billion filing fee stories on pages three and five of the informa now let's look at uh, the gold street business west african gas pipeline company ghana negotiate lower gas price a cheaper sankofa gas becomes available that's what we have slapped on the front page of the gold street business as well as another story here which says bog begins overhaul of microfinance rural banks so that's an interesting story over there gips criticizes procurement act says it intensifies corruption so the front page and page four this morning of the gold street business has full details okay now let's take a look at the daily heritage the daily heritage says here Outgone NMC chair scores himself 30%. That story is on page two of the Daily Heritage. Now, our TI bill will be passed before 2018 ends. Haruna assures that story is on pages eight and nine. Ghanaians vote um, December 27th for OT region and others. That story is on page three and um, two. Fire service, women sacked over pregnancy fight for survival. Why are women mm. being sacked for being pregnant? That story is on page five of the Daily Heritage. Now, do we have some online stories? In case we, well, definitely. We have, we have some online stories. <laughs> so now let's look at uh, some of the stories online. Citynewsroom.com 96. NDC MPs. Um, is it race? Okay, yes. 96 NDC MPs raise... 600,000 Ghana cities for Mahama Ras Mubarak. This is what uh, well, the Honorable Member of Parliament has to say concerning Mahama. Now, Bagbing Spiel, seven others petition NDC Council of Elders over filing fee. So that's what, that's also another story. Another one here says alleged contaminated KATH blood. Well, it's been proved to be negative. You know when they tested it for HIV, so alleged contaminated KATH. That's a Confanoti uh, Teaching Hospital blood test negative for HIV and syphilis. And uh, GIJ students protest after being barred from writing exams over fees. And I think that that's all we have on the or at least as headline stories. Mm -hmm. So there are more stories on citynewsroom.com. Visit our website for more information. In the meantime, we've been joined by two very honorable guests. We've been joined by Erika Makuchum, who's a government spokesperson. Good morning. Welcome morning, to Breakfast Ike. Daily. How are you doing? We're doing great. We're doing great. You were not here last week. Yes. Apparently, uh, you were sick. Yes, uh, apparently. Sadly apparently. so. <laughs> Sadly so. Are you, feeling much, well. are you feeling much better? I have to start exercising like <laughs> some of our guests. <laughs> <laughs> I have to start. You are, you are more, than, more than welcome. Thank you. I'll join you in the Good gym. Good morning, Jeff. Uh, by the grace of God, we are fine. <laughs> now, we've also been joined by uh, Kobina Adekoka. He's a great Akra regional chairman of the NDC. Good morning. Welcome to Good Breakfast morning. Day. Good morning. How are you? Good. 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 How are you? Yeah. Very well, thank you. Yeah. I like your <laughs> traditional. Yes, the, the made in Ghana. 
blue, blue. <laughs> oh, you also wore blue. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel left out. You're always left out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There's so a lawyer. He likes the uh, shirt and tie. Yeah, we are used Next to it. Next time I'm coming, I'll wear you. Don't worry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now let's okay, go straight let's to our first story. story yeah. NBC flag bearer ship race. So, uh, Bobbing Spears, I mean, not this petition council. You know, of elders, and they are suggesting 100,000 Ghana cities. Yes, that story is on citynewsroom.com, and it says here nine aspirants are in the NDC flag opposition have petitioned the party's council of elders over 20,000 and 400,000 costs, mm -hmm. respectively, for nomination forms and filing fees. Albin Bagbin, Ekos Pio Gabra, Joshua Alabi, Sylvester Mensa, Stephen Atu. Bigger. Bigger, yeah. um, and and the rest, all all of them are um, petitioning the council, and the reason they they have uh, petitioned them, amongst others, they say that the NEC has not met the procedural requirements set out in Article 42, um, Section 1F of the party's constitution for publishing electoral guidelines and generally has not met standards of stakeholders' uh, consultation acceptable in a social democratic party. They also argue that the publishing of the guidelines NEC has exceeded the authority vested in it by the Article 41F that I said, uh, to which imposed eligibility criteria not provided for in the party's constitution. So they have a lot of issues with the filing fees, he said the figure is unreasonable, and that calls into question their basic commitment as social democrats. Mm. So, um, Chairman, yeah. a lot of these uh, aspirants are not happy mm. with what's going on. 20,000 is a bit high, and 400,000 is also a yes. bit extreme. Now, now while, while, they're, <laughs> the, uh, while the others are complaining, uh, Ras Mubarak says that they have raised about 600,000 Ghana cities for Mahama, and he says here, and I quote, initially we thought we would just raise 420,000 cities, but very interestingly, a lot of support in terms of raising the funds has come from friends, well wishers, and members of the party. Mm -hmm. From the last count, we raised a little over 600,000, yeah. of course. And, and following up with that, too, they are arguing, um, they're, they're telling the Council of Elders that uh, the party chairman, they are demanding that the party chairman, the general secretary, and other members of the NEC or other party secretaries have demonstrated bias in favor of a particular candidate. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's also not fair because everyone's supposed to get an equal footing to... to, 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 to um, if you study law this morning, let me say good morning. I'm very happy to be here. Of course you are. Very, 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 very happy to be here. <laughs> Why would you be happy to be here? <laughs> Saturday I was watching my friend on your station, and mm. I, I hadn't taken my bath. I nearly came to the studio without bathing. <laughs> Why? Why? <laughs> to come and face it. Well, but you didn't, you didn't trust your... You know, didn't trust the man that you sent. <laughs> you know, you know, good I, I was supposed to come and they didn't call me. So, uh -huh. okay, let's, let's, uh, get, let's come back to Monday. What's going on? You know what? I feel sorry for those aspirants. Very, very sorry for them. I feel sorry for them. This is a party. We had had branch elections. We had had constituency elections. We had had regional election. We have had a national election. None of them contributed a dime. Mm -hmm. The Council of Elders met them when they sent a letter of intent and asked everybody, each of them to contribute some of their party. They refused. They never. They were called to the Council of Elders meeting and they asked everybody to donate I think either 500 or 50, 50,000 50, or so, something of that sort. None of them. But they saw, they saw the party going through all the processes. And the processes that we went through, it was the 1111 city that the branch members contributed. The branch election, the 11 city that the branches contributed. That was what we gave to them to run their branch elections. And when it came to constituencies, the same thing, the, the, uh, part of the, uh, uh, what they call it, the dues that was paid was used. None of them gave a dime. Not even former President Mahama. I said yes, the aspirants. 
I said, none of them. I'm not here to... You see, the moment we start saying President Maham, President Maham, then we, we, we all lose the battle. But are you yeah. focusing on the people complaining or I'm all I'm saying of them? that people were asked, people who has expressed intent mm -hmm. to contest, mm -hmm. were, were hauled to the Council of Elders, and they were asked to contribute towards the run of the party elections. And I'm saying none of them. Hmm. Sorry, I, we just want to get a formal clarity here. By aspirants, do you mean aspirants for the... Those who have expressed interest... For flag bearership. For flag bearership, uh -huh. yes. So all the aspirants... All the aspirants were okay. held And none of none them? None of them contributed. Okay. okay. None of okay. them. The party went to the emotions of... Our, our Congress at... I'm a member of the planning committee. Mm -hmm. And as I sit here now, most of the transport that... The, we ask the chairman of the constituencies mm -hmm. to fund the transportation of their delegates to the to trade fair. Mm -hmm. Half of the money was given to them. As I sit here now, half of it has not been paid. Mm -hmm. In Greater Accra, half, some of the monies have not been paid. Mm -hmm. Voter region, all the regions. Mm -hmm. The feeding, that Congress alone. The amount of money it cost and how the way the party went through. They never even came to the meetings to come and say we are contributing. Mm. So let's put that aside. Mm -hmm. They don't expect me to go and contribute one city for them, for us to use it to run an election for them. Okay. So that's the reason why you are charging the, the, so the next amounts. Month, okay. And we look at the cost of running this presidential primaries. Mm -hmm. it's, it's in the region of almost 8 million Ghana cities. Wow. Yes. So Eight shouldn't we million. bring the cost down? No, you see, the YC alone is charging us 3,000 Ghana cents per constituency. Multiply 3,000 by 275 constituencies. Somebody has work calculator here. Multiply, like, I want the, I, I want the uh, viewers to know. Mm -hmm. 3,000 times 275 constituencies. It, you comes, continue, it comes to continue. almost 825,000 Ghana cities. Around 82,500. Exactly. And who is going to pay for it? The party is supposed to raise funds through dues. Hmm. And I've told you that we have we've been raising dues around the party. The cost of getting this function is so huge. So all that we are asking is to contribute your quota. Mm -hmm. But isn't 400,000 a bit high? Is, divide yeah. 400,000 eh, 400, per constituency. It comes about one CD, 50 cents. Yes, 50%. but to ask that from, from an individual. And you are, you are not asking you mm -hmm. to go to the bank and borrow money. Mm -hmm. You want to be a leader of a party. Mm -hmm. You should have a network. Hmm. You should have a network. I wanted to be a chairman of the party. If I knew Eric's telephone number, I would have called Eric to give me something. Mm. Just sorry. Whether eight hundred twenty-five thousand. Exactly. Okay, so I'll, I'll, it's eight hundred twenty-five thousand. Twenty-five. Yeah, because yeah, I said eight hundred twenty-five thousand yeah. Ghana cedis. Wow. Just to pay the YC. This is not coming to the last time we did the Greater Accra. We did, they were even charging five thousand certain because of the number of delegates hmm. would determine the number of bullets. Because don't forget that they bring volunteers, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> they haven't got a permanent staff, mm -hmm. so they have to recruit people. And you have to pay them mm. transportation. But, but that's still quite high because even if you take the 800, let's say 800, 500, um, yes. 830,000, mm -hmm. you're raising 8 million. Exactly. What are you spending 8 million the, on? I'm saying that the yeast should not give it for free. Okay. It's not free. Yeah, but that's still under. They a are million. charging 3,000 per constituency. Yes. So that's their minimal, minimal cost. Mm -hmm. And you have to pay for it. Yes, that's still under 1 million. Why do you need the other 7 million? Did you get the figure I said? Eight hundred twenty-five thousand Ghana cedis, yeah, and you, you are raising eight million. Are you saying you're looking at million, eight million? Eight million Ghana cedis. Why? Why? Good. You have to feed your delegates. Mm -hmm. Some of them will live. Some of them living in Somenya. People have to come to Asmankasi to come and catch the boat. Mm -hmm. You have to transport the person, mm -hmm. right? And in Greater Accra, we are talking about three thousand branches, mm -hmm. and every branch has got nine executives. Mm -hmm. So that's about what, 20, uh, 2,700 20, 20, mm -hmm. delegates. Mm -hmm. the, the constituencies, 34, 28 member, uh, delegates from every constituency. So, again, I'm talking about almost three to 4,000 people who have, who have to go to their various constituencies mm -hmm. to vote. Mm -hmm. 
you, you have to feed them. They come and stay the whole day. You have to transport them. I talk about 275 constituencies all over the country. Mm -hmm. it's, not a, it's not a mean joke. Mm. You understand? So the neck sat down. They brought the cost. We looked at it. The, the, the neck is made up of the lead, the minority leader in parliament was there. About 15 or 20 MPs mm -hmm. were there. We had we have the 20, the, the 10, 50, uh, five members from every uh, uh, region. Mm -hmm. So that's about 50, uh, uh, 100 of us. Mm. I didn't tell you we are so stupid to go and see them make that decision. Okay. You understand? So. We are asking you to contribute. Because even if you give all, if, if you pay that amount, we will still need additional money to, to be able to prosecute the, 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 the project. Okay. I heard my brother saying that uh, let's have one person pays. Fine. That will embolden us to ask more people to come and contribute from others because we know that we have got only one person contributing. If even half, we are saying that if you want to lead the party, show some semblance of being not only resourceful, but having the, you can think out of the box. So because they did not support the initial election the for, national, the, no, for the national no, executives, no, they are being pushed to no, support no, this no, one. No, I'm, I'm telling about the cost involved. Whether they contribute or not, I'm saying that if they are good party members, <laughs> initially when we ask them to contribute for us, to prosecute our elections from day one, they, they, they refuse to do that. So this is some form of punishment? It's yes. not a punishment. It's a matter of contributing your quota to the round of party. Because okay. you want to be a leader. But shouldn't be... it be based on merit, really? Because what, even what when you look at the MPP elections, they spent just about 85000 each. What, what, that, what, that's what we, Richard Agamba said. We are talking about, are talking about uh, three years ago. Yeah, this but is, it's only This is 2018. Years. Yes. Your mascara, the, the amount you paid for last three years, is that the same <laughs> price you have paid okay, today? Okay. <laughs> 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 some some parents have said that this is a bid to support one particular candidate. Yes, it and, 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 that, and Ras Mubarak has yes. also come out to say MPs have... Um, we are at liberty to support them. Yeah, we them coming. Uh, raise them we, well, yeah, 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 I heard you say it's a gimmick. No. Yeah. I had people in my constituency, my region, calling me to give them the a hashtag, the number. To go and pay yesterday, Sunday. As in a short code. Yeah, yesterday. So people, to pay for who? Because people have people have started have started raising funds. Okay. And so, if I believe in your cause, you support it. I support. I remember Akufuado's time, President Akufuado. The ten regions of then chairman of uh, NDC MPP, troop to his house mm -hmm. and supported him. While there were other candidates, so when uh, the hypocrisy. In this country sometimes gets me going. Ten regional chairman trooped to his house hmm. when there were other aspirants. And they were supporting him. We were giving money. So what is wrong with somebody also supporting uh, one candidate? And people keep m m making a, a hue and cry of that. It's a democracy. It's a democracy. I have, I have, I have expressed my support. I'm a regional chairman. I'm entitled to do that. And I'll say it anywhere, anytime. And to this extent, you've even given I've financial given money. support. Yes. Okay. I've, I've no qualms about that. Because I believe in the ideology, I, the, the, the principle of the person. I don't have to go and shy and hide behind some curtain. My person will mean John Ramayana. Whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If the other people are able to convince me, with the, I, I, I will support them. Mm -hmm. But if you haven't done that, don't stop anybody from... Going to so put that aside. Okay. As 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 we sit here, they are also raising funds. People mm -hmm. are people are paying. Mm. Okay. We should stop the hypocrisy in this country. But beyond, we should stop beyond the hypocrisy. Beyond the hypocrisy, is it not against the party rules? What party rules? As a national, as a as a regional executive, to be supporting I any candidate individually. If I go and stand somewhere, and I say Greater Accra Region mm. support Mr. Excellent, that but has valid party rules. Mm. But as an individual, I'm entitled, and nobody can stop me. Okay. Nobody. Thank you, Chairman. Can stop me. Thank, Thank you. you. Now we'll hear okay, from so. Eric. <laughs> wow. I mean, this is. Uh, I'm sure my uh, big brother here, or even my uncle, 
was listening to me on Saturday because mm -hmm. I haven't spoken this morning. Yeah, I, was but, just, I listened to but you. But he's referring to <laughs> things yeah, that no, no, I actually I to you. <laughs> said on. You see, um, I listened to you carefully. Uh, without sounding mm -hmm. um, dramatic. You know, this is pantomime time. You know pantomime? Mm -hmm. Okay, in, in Ghana circles, we call it concert party. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't feel sorry for the NDC at all. Uh, when these things were happening, I had to go and read one of the books that we used to read as kids, uh, Aesop Fables. Mm. You know the Aesop Fables? Mm. You know the boy that was crying wolf mm -hmm. and lost integrity at a time when oh, the, uh, the wolves came. They actually devoured him plus the sheep. That is the NDC for you. Now, he's talking about hypocrisy here. I'm surprised that he's talking about hypocrisy. You see, all the commentary surrounding even happenings within the MPP, maybe from 2000, or all the things that they have said about the MPP in the past regarding aspirants, regarding composition of our national executives, regarding people who uh, become flag bearers of the NPP, mm -hmm. regarding how the party has supported a particular candidate. Mm -hmm. Now, all of a sudden, the NDC decides that if you charge 420,000 Ghana cities mm -hmm. for each aspirant, they have justifications for it. Either you're going to run an election, either you have to pay security, either you have to pay the EC, and all of those things. And I asked them, all of these things that they are saying never apply to the MPP. So I don't feel sorry for them. On, 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 funny enough, I'm actually enjoying it. <laughs> Again, the so-called unity. Hmm. Now you're saying that these people are not even good aspirants. They're not good party members. And that they did not even contribute to running of the, uh, their various branch elections. And that by dint of that, they have to charge this outrageous, humongous, <laughs> gargantuan I like your amount words, of yeah. money uh, that's and justify it. They, 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 and you, that's are saying, you are using the word hypocrisy, hypocrisy. here. I, I haven't been using hypocrisy. You see, it's about time that our politics, and I'm happy that they, they've got into this stage. And this is not the, the what is, this is almost in, in when we were kids, we used to say something called comedies. This is just the initial things that, and the followers that will come out of the NDC. But because I am a consummate Democrat, I wish them well. I wish that they get their act together so that they provide that kind of, uh, if you like, responsible opposition. So that it puts government on its toes. Because what's happening now? Listen, all the other aspirants have made claims that there's attempts, machinations, and all sorts of things to support another candidate. Either that is true or not. It's coming from them. Now, a regional chairman is casting aspersions at all of them by saying that by view of even them expressing opinions on what they have put in their own constitution and that they feel that the party has violated this. No, I would no. have expected. The party has not violated no, That no, is I, an opinion. No, no, no. But, no, but if you tell me, no, I was I, very quiet no, when no, you were speaking. No, I want you to get this they, No, what, what what you're said, not speaking no, to no, me. No, speak to them. No, what they've Let said there, finish. the chairman. party has not violated Chairman, chairman, chairman. Any regulation. Okay, you decide. With all due respect, clarify. Eric, let him clarify. He's trying to clarify something. Briefly, chairman. Okay, let him clarify something. Briefly, just chairman. I don't know anything about MPP, so I wouldn't talk about MPP. I am a member of the NEC. Yes, and chairman. We, we clarify. Went to but that is, I mean, I'm I can defend. That we, is not we fair. We went to no, the guy. He's trying to clarify. Let him clarify. Let him clarify. Then you continue. Chairman, briefly. Whatever they've said, they you read this. We have never violated anything. Okay. Okay. The party is supposed to draw up guidelines. Okay. And the guy that NEC is the second highest body apart from Congress. Okay. And we have we are clothed with residual powers mm -hmm. to take decisions that Congress cannot 
hasn't taken. So we haven't violated any regulation. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much. Now, Eric, we want Eric to continue. We want Eric to continue. We want you to continue. And hopefully, no, 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 of view mondays and wednesdays at 9 p.m as bernard avlet takes the news further he will bring the right guests ask them the relevant questions and get you the real insights you need on the big stories for the day what the what government did then was to first amend the university of ghana act to give the president the power to appoint council again mm -hmm. great but when they did that they left out the university why yeah I, I, they left out UCC, they left out UDS. Yes. Now, the, the KNUST one is even funnier because when they removed appointed by the PNDC from the opening clause, mm -hmm. they still left in three people, three other people. Appointed by whom? The Point of View with Bernard Avle, Monday and Wednesday nights, only on CTTV. TV. Thank you so much for being with us. Now, before the break, we were discussing um, some aspirants not being happy with the hmm. 420,000 Ghana cities they need to raise for the NDC flag bearership. And um, Eric Amakuchum, who is a government spokesperson, was uh, concluding his statement. I, ju I just started my submission, <laughs> and then he rudely You're in the middle of your submission. He was interrupting it. Let's agree on being <laughs> in the middle. I, I, so I, 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 he didn't interrupt. to clarify uh, something. Okay, okay. Right, thank that's you, fine. Chairman. Just, thank that, you. That's just by the way. Mm -hmm. But you see, I, I'm, like I said, it's interesting that all of these things is happening within the NDC. And I've, I've stated that even some of the things that are, is happening now, would even get worse, you understand? And I would have wished that whilst they were pontificating, whilst we were in opposition, and I was surprised that Uncle used the word hypocrisy here, you know, because they have, it's almost like a flip-flop and double standards and double speak. Then all of a sudden, every single aspect of these things is justified. And that, for them, is the case. You see, mm -hmm. they have moved away from that siege mentality, whereby they created almost like a convergence of marginal groups and all of those things and created this perception, even using tribalism and ethnicity and all of those things as a basis against the MPP, right? And you see, anywhere you create a siege mentality, it becomes like them against us mentality. Mm. And the people have risen. People have become smarter. So now, even within the NDC, they are... They are using the same principles, the same thing that has been used against in a national body politic within the NDC. Now, the NDC are calling for the fact that even within their stronghold, which is the Volta region, when they went to an election, they didn't have uh, a representative at the mm -hmm. highest level of their party. Mm -hmm. So they have to fix it. You understand? They have to fix it. Now, all of a sudden, the NPP and the NDC if you look at us and you look at the, 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 the composition of our national executives and the kind of politics that we do, and you compare that to the NDC, all those things that they said about us has come back to <coughs> haunt them. Again, what is it? You're running an internal elections, and you're claiming that a party as big as the NDC and mm -hmm. all the things that you claim, you cannot use the party's internal machinery to generate 
enough resources to run an election, and you have to fall on aspirants to do so. So how are you going to even prosecute an, uh, being a general election to start? So this argument is neither here nor there. Now, you say that you're going to charge 420,000 Ghana cities, mm -hmm. and you give them two days. And about, whilst you're doing that, another group of people right, have decided that they have converged to contribute to a particular candidate. And this is a logic. If well and truly it is not an attempt to railroad road people and basically make sure that a particular candidate has an advantage, why are those MPs and those uh, party members not saying that we are going to marshal and garner the support of every NDC member to contribute to run the elections so that the people who are now complaining will not say that it's being done in an attempt hmm. to prevent them from but, doing but, so. But nothing stops but nothing, absolutely, no, nothing because stops people from the, supporting the, the other logic, candidates. Uh, it didn't come from me. Hmm. The logic is that we are a political party. We are in opposition. Hmm. And even what is even ironical is that there's a political party that just a few years ago built a $25 million office edifice. It's there. At the point, they couldn't even tell us who owned the building. You, you're a journalist. You were at GTV at the time. We asked them. They said, this is owned by this person. Mm -hmm. Somebody built it for us. In a mm -hmm. virtual, uh, I mean, the final analysis, mm -hmm. they are occupying the building. Mm -hmm. Now, $25 million in a few years, <laughs> you can't find 820,000 uh, 80 million Ghana cities mm -hmm. to run an internal elections. Mm -hmm. in, in three, we say something called uh, Asen Sebe. No, we have to you understand? Up. So, that's for me, for me, for me, it's an internal thing. We, yeah. from the MPP and by extension living government would wish them well. Mm. But again, they, they've dug their own pit. Yeah. And, and they have sleep to in it. sleep in it. Sleep in it. Okay, so we'll move on to the next topic. Oh, oh, but um, yeah, the yeah, former yeah. president, yeah. Rawlings, is also uh, yeah, speaking yeah. up on this. Yeah. He's calling for reduction of filing fee. He mm -hmm. says here, I'm going to quote him, and then we'll move on to the, mm -hmm. the next topic. I, didn't even I talk doubt about if the anyone of us um, who has served with integrity relying on our salaries can raise those, these filing fees unless we engage in some unethical behavior while in office, unless we abuse uh, or misused our positions during our tenure. So he has an issue with this, and he's saying that <laughs> not everybody can just use their salaries to, to raise yeah, 420000 And you're not asking them, you're, you're asking, asking them to raise salary to from... You. Nobody can use his or her salary to go and... Let, let me correct some. Uh, briefly, be briefly. Mm. One, nobody has been given two days mm. to raise money. There's a time limit that you pick up. You pick your forms today, and after that, you file 10 days thereafter. Mm -hmm. So you've got ample time to do your fundraising. Mm -hmm. Secondly, I want you to understand that the party is also going to use its internal mechanism mm -hmm. to generate funds. Okay. Their money alone cannot run the election. Mm. The party is using its internal machine to we have got a fundraising a committee who are also embarking on raising funds. We are asking you to contribute to the event. That is all. That is all we ask you to do. The party will use its internal mechanism, and I told you earlier on, in our previous elections, the party used its internal mechanism to run those elections. And now we are going to the final stage where you want to be our leader of the party. You want to be a future president. Sorry, we, I want us to move on to another story, but yes. I'm really yes. tempted to ask this one yes. question. Does so, NEC accept the fact that this action or this decision to charge 420000 inherently supports one particular candidate? No. NEC no, does we, not we, accept that the, fact. The people, okay. uh, NEC is made up of hundred per, almost okay. 100 persons. Do you think that we went to the room and the like minded said they are going to okay. do this for one person. No. Okay, thank, thank you, you very much, we'll uh, Chairman Adi Koka. Now, let's move on to another story. It's in respect of uh, the impasse at GIJ. GIJ cancels two exams, two exam papers after students' protest. So, um, a protest by, I'm reading from citynewsroom.com, it says here, a protest by some students of GIJ, uh, Ghana Institute of Journalism, on Sunday has led to the cancellation of two papers in the school's first semester exam for level 400 master students. So there was an exam supposed to be at 1 p.m. and another one at 4 p.m. But due to some protests outside by some students who were not initially allowed to uh, partake in the examinations and other students, who had even paid their fees in full, supported them mm -hmm. in this particular demonstration. Those two papers were cancelled and they shall be subsequently 
held. So there's a quick statement or a press release from the school authorities and uh, Jifasha will take us through Yes, um, that briefly, right away. Um, they said here, the Ghana Institute of Journalism wishes, Ghana Institute of Journalism wishes to ensure all our students and the general public that the GIJ is open and will continue its end of semester examinations as scheduled from today, Monday, December 3rd. Students who have paid their fees and registered are eligible to take part in the exam. These include students who face challenges with registration online and were assisted by the Academic Affairs Department of the Registrar. However, management is still eager to consider any student who paid the required fees by November 21st deadline and have been unable to register online. So they are empathizing with those who've had challenges with the online mm. portal. Yeah. But if you've not paid the required 80% for new new students and the 60%, I think they are still standing by that and saying that you have to before, before you can take the exam. And they go on to say that they've extended this deadline several times from September to October to November. So on their part, they've done the best that they can. For proper planning of university operations and administration, registration cannot be extended beyond November 21st, uh, 2018. It has been the practice of GIJ and still is. The first students are required to pay a minimum of 80% uh, of their fees in the first semester by the due date, while continuing students pay 60% of their fees. The remaining fees are paid in the second semester. So um, the school is not budging, they're still staying by it. I think we'll start with, with Eric. Um, I followed the, uh, the story over the weekend. And I mean, I think that I, I'll take it from almost this whole conversation surrounding governance in our tertiary education mm. system structure. I mean, I think it's gotten to a point where it's become one too many we've had issues with. Even when you guys were in your law school, uh, it's still raging. Mm. There's uh, KNUST, UEW. Mm. Uh, University oh, of Ghana, Ghana also threatened yes. a demonstration. Yeah, I think that we need to look at the whole structure again. And even look at the relationship between the students and the management. We have created almost like a subculture where it's almost like a do as you're told thing. I, I don't believe in that. I, I, I feel that. And there's always some kind of friction between students and management and the authorities. And we, don't, we can't find uh, like a, almost like a meeting point, a convergence. In as much as my view that uh, it has been convention to pay school fees and a certain amount of money and all of those things. I do not believe that that is the route that you go where actually now degenerates into one a demonstration and then you actually prevent the ones who have already paid mm -hmm. okay. to um, basically uh, not write the exams, which is almost an inconvenience to everybody, including uh, putting the calendar into some mm -hmm. kind of disarray and all of yeah, those sure. things. We need to find better ways of dealing with this. A lot of students, and I'm happy that I am part of a government that has a conviction towards education like this. A lot of students face, or parents, or mm -hmm. even guardians, face a lot of hardships when it comes to these things. Mm -hmm. And it's about time that, again, this conversation surrounding how even the um, our tertiary education system is run, for instance, so that, I mean, brilliant, smart students who have the capacity to go through a tertiary education cycle. I not put through some of these things. And I mean, of course, every time you start this conversation, we start talking about free SHS and all that. Now, just imagine that you have, you face these challenges, even at a second cycle level. How are you able to even progress from there to the next stage? And it's, a, a, I mean, the responsibility of government or even the state to make sure that Every student, regardless of where they come from, has an opportunity to go through an educational system. I would, yeah. for instance, even Clamo, and I mean, I'm just going to be saying, Clamo, that listen, once the, the, the students have the capacity to go through the system and they, we, we can find, even at the tertiary education level, 
a means tested way of making sure that no child or no young person is left behind by virtue of the fact that they cannot afford. They have to be able to do so. Thank uh, you. I don't have enough information on that, I'm sure because it happened over the weekend. Mm. It would, I mean, it but the developed. university so has developed. actually uh, issued a statement, but there are ways of dealing with that. And you see, this whole dogmatic, intransigent position that are taken by authorities, so what mm. is the big deal? What would mm. happen? If you just let if, it write. What yeah. would happen if you have a 21st uh, <laughs> November deadline and there has been an impasse and decided that, okay, for, mm. by virtue of the fact that we have issues with this, we would give some kind of reprieve mm. and allow the students. I mean, come on, because they are in the university. Mm. I went to a uh, university, and I don't want to tell my own story. I went to school where I didn't get my certificate until after three years mm. when I had finished paying. You understand? So, I mean, whilst there's a certain critical mass of people who have paid their fees and you can run it concurrently, mm -hmm. that is not to say that if you go to school, you don't pay. But the point is that what is it going to happen? What's going to happen? Is the world going to come to an end, for instance, mm -hmm. when you create a leeway for students who, for one reason or the other, cannot be able to pay Thank you. and even create a system where we don't get to this point. I mean, I don't understand. I mean, Thank maybe there's two, you. authorities will be able much. to explain. Thank you. you know, the rector was appointed on a controversial basis. Mm. Yeah. You remember the rector there? Mm -hmm. I do, I do. Yeah. You know, the, 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 the people argue that he was not supposed to be mm -hmm. appointed as rector. So there were a lot of difficulties for, uh, before he was appointed. Mm -hmm. Has also worked in that institution for, for a very, very long time. Mm -hmm. So he, he should have known better. What, what is best practice in the system? So some people have paid and some people have not paid and that uh, they were owing. Like my brother said, normally what you do, you allow them to see the exams. Mm -hmm. But before you release a certificate, yeah. they, have to pay. <laughs> they have to pay. Yes. So without the certificate, you can have an exam. Yes. If you are coming here to work, yes. they'll ask you for yes. a certificate. Yes. You yes. can say, I went to GIJ. Yes. But if there's no certificate, you show that. And all of this, uh, yes. Nobody will employ you. Yeah. So why, why, why don't you allow them to see the exams? Mm. And that was what was done previously. Mm. I'm told. Because yesterday I called. I had a few friends. There. So when I heard that, there was the most, we were then at a Pentecostal church when mm -hmm. it came on the social network that the police were finding difficult. So we, we had to call to find out uh, some of our on? boys were there. For, and they said, yes, there's a demonstration that they've been, uh, uh, they've, uh, they've, uh, they've shut the school down because uh, non-payment non of exam fees. I said, oh, is that, I mean, what is this? And <laughs> on a Sunday, if, if even they've got the money mm -hmm. to pay, you before, and where are you going to keep the money on the Sunday? I don't think the, the school has got any vote there to keep the money. So I think uh, it was uncalled for, and like you said, the intransigence. These days, it seems the rectors and the vice chancellors are, are becoming a law unto themselves mm. and trying to not to understand the generation that they are dealing with. You see, sometimes they see these students as. To kids. Children. Kids. Yes, and our time, how it works. You understand. But it doesn't work our like time, that. good. <laughs> our time population was about some six or five million. Uh, so yeah. that one there you could. But now, when you pass through GIJ in the evening or mm -hmm. the afternoon, yes, the number of people that you see going to, passing through that place huge. And even, I thought the vice chancellor or director would think about moving that school from mm -hmm. where it, it is. It is too mm -hmm. small. That place is too small. I don't know. I don't know how many of them are uh, uh, the classroom. I don't know how big they are, right? You see the whole place jammed, hmm. and it's not conducive for academic work. So they don't think out of their box. They are telling about these petty, 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 petty things. And this is what is this is this is Ghana for us. You know, this is Ghana for us. We are not always not thinking out of the box. Hmm. Petty, petty things. So then, what you eventually hope to see is the school substance stance yeah, on the, the pay, exam, let them write, deadline. Hmm. Let them write. Yeah. I don't know the day when it comes to collecting a certificate or graduating. Yeah. If you don't, if you haven't uh, paid your, your you can even your, add a little penalty over oh, there. Well, maybe, that you, I mean, that, that, be, that, that might even compound the situation. Mm. The person is been struggling to, to <laughs> pay <laughs> what you are. No, I, I mean, before you come for your certificate, yeah. so you can you work know, for a while you know, and come yeah, and pay. So they should allow yeah. them to go and uh, take the. There's too much. Uh, 
Look, what we are doing now in this country, the pressure is mounting up. There's so much pressure, pressure mounting up. If you are not careful, the last time I came here, I told you about this, uh, or it was not in this studio. Mm. You know, there was this gas explosion in the mm. uh, Ashanti. Kumasi. Yeah. Kumasi. And did you see the reaction of the youth? Early mm. morning, they masked up and it was going to be a disaster. Mm -hmm. You know, the police had to step in. So what we are, we are sitting on some time bomb here, that if you are not able to control our emotions, one day it will explode in our face. Okay. Well, thank we, you. we thank God for <laughs> peace. We'll, we'll, we'll so, look at the last story, but yeah. first let's read some messages um, by some of our viewers. So um, we'll, we'll start with um, he he wonders shall never end in GI jail. The rector has arrived and he's on campus. There are about six security men at the gate, and upon arrival, you are asked for your level. If you are not in level two hundred or diploma, you will be refused entry. Some mm. master students are still outside trying to gain access. Uh, the police wow. have also arrived. So mm. wow. this is that coming from a student. Right That's what I one think it's a shame. It's a, it's a shame. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it speaks of ability to manage uh, you know, people. Mm -hmm. you know. Sami Pwache says, we the MPP who voted for Nana are not we, we don't regret it. Still, we believe in Anado can transform Ghana. I'm also wondering about the NDC National Executive support Mahama and still want to organize this so-called election. I think Spear and Co. should let Mahama go for on they want, they want, should let Mahama go unopposed because all the minority MPs are by his side. So where is this election coming from? Um, hypocrisy, blah, blah, my regards to Honorable Seth Oduro. So that the is the argument that the, the 420 is supposed to force Muhammad to go on a post. Really? Yeah. That's what people are saying. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> From Mystic Insight in Sawem says, the educational system is gradually scrambling under this super incompetent government. A few weeks ago, it was KNUST followed mm. by GIJ um, offers communication as a course, and yet they lack the competency to commu communicate to their students effectively. And I'm sure it's Hmm. under the leadership of Nanado oh, affecting our various <laughs> yeah. government. Okay, we, and we'll the CTAG strike has also uh, taken a serious turn. Exactly. turn. Yes, yeah. and yeah. Um, some coach from Cape Coast says, Adwoka is being economical with the truth. The general secretary said the party do not have money to run the election and well, gave the saying. breakdown of the amount as to how it will be used. He did not say the party will contribute, but all will be on the aspirants' no, no, raised no, no, money. No, 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 so this no, is coming from a viewer. Uh, the economic hardship across the country is unbearable for the ordinary Ghanaian. In fact, times are hard, and therefore NDC is not exceptional, hence the high filing fee. Uh, the price of fuel is very high, and civilians are complaining very bitterly. That's coming from Aziz Donla. Yes, price of fuel is coming it's down. High. And, um, <laughs> and in spite of all these challenges, you want to raise 420,000 no, Ghana cities for an How are that, we going to get that, that money? Why we cannot pay the but let's move on to the next, see, the next four topic. Four years ago, it was 14 cities. Mm -hmm. So you can, now it's about. But if, okay. we're, as, you, if we're experiencing hardship in our pockets, how are we going to raise this money for so, aspirants? So if we go one, 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 one city to the delegates, well, at least somebody can afford one city mm -hmm. to, to, to support the cause. Mm -hmm. So that's no problem. Okay. Yeah, we are not asking them to go and collect from their own mm -hmm. bank okay. accounts. No. Okay. okay. But be at, as it we, we can also manage they, they, our they, expenses. They, 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 they sell, Thank you, they Chairman. They can sell one of their houses <laughs> to They can sell one of their houses <laughs> to pay. Okay. <laughs> now, President Okufara, <laughs> reading from citynewsroom.com, <laughs> says make public <laughs> report on creation of new regions, Nana. Ado orders. So, President Nanado Danko Kufalo has instructed the Ministry of Information to make the Justice Brobe Commission report that led to the creation of the new regions available to the general public. And uh, this comes after the dismissal of the suit seeking to challenge the decision of the EC to only allow residents in the affected areas to vote in the referendum. Uh, after the Supreme Court recently gave clearance to the Electoral Commission to hold the referendum in selected areas earmarked for the creation of the new region. So uh, some have also described as needless the recommendations of the 19-member commission which held nationwide consultations and urged the government to create the administrative regions to be known. Uh, so the six ad administrative regions uh, are set to be created. The election is December, uh, December 7. Now, creation of the new regions and... Uh, 27, okay. sorry. And um, matters okay. arising, the report has finally been released. Albert Kwashiga asked for this report before the, 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 when the lawsuit started, exactly. but the report was not forthcoming. And after the Supreme Court decision, yeah. the, the report is out.
Uh, see, the question one asks Ashanti region. You see how vast Ashanti region is, and yet nobody. Chairman, you guys, you you don't. Uh, you Eric, don't he's about to make Eric, his point. Eric, you Eric, you Eric, 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 don't oh, go oh, there. Oh, okay, my chairman, Eric, let's, let's finish. You come in. Oh, oh, you come in. Oh, oh, this thing that I've been doing with my younger brother, uh, I can advise you. Oh, no, 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 I'm coming. I'm not going to ask you. But chairman, don't single out a specific. No, 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 no. He's entitled to his. I'm making a statement. I'm making a statement. Okay, okay. We are we are creating more regions, voter regions. Mm -hmm. The size of wood, and we are creating region. Mm -hmm. Ronga half, West. Mm -hmm. I don't, I because heard the people want I it. I haven't heard about East. Oh, are you sure? Yeah, it was a petition. Yeah, I haven't heard about Eastern region. Mm -hmm. I haven't heard about Ashanti region. Mm -hmm. And these are vast areas. Mm -hmm. I'm sure petitions must have come that those people in a certain part of Ashanti region also want to be. Have their Honorable, you are assuming at this point, yeah, but yeah, what yeah. we can don't, say don't for a fact is that the people in the OT area are petitioning and the Volta presidency. And the likes, yeah. yeah. Petition. Mm. Mm -hmm. You, there's no problem about that. We have mm -hmm. no problem about that. But the question is that you want to divide voter region. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you are saying that not everybody in that region will have a say. Mm -hmm. It's only the people that you you want to give the region, they have to have a say. Mm -hmm. we, are, we, are a bigger, we are a big entity, and you want to split that. And you said, as for me, being part of an entity, I'm, I don't matter. It's only those people in that area who have to determine whether they want a region or not. Fair enough. Look at the history of formation of regions in this country. After any period, you had about only three regions. You had the Northern Territories, yeah. you had the Eastern Region, uh, uh, Togoland, I think four, plus the Ash uh, uh, Ashanti or whatever. So we had only four regions, right? We lived harmoniously. Rollins came and he created the upper region. Mm. We lived harmoniously. Now, this particular one that we are creating seems to even have ended up in the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. It shows you that there are certain underlying currents that you must be, you must take cognizance of it. Mm -hmm. The people in the Dagbon area, the upper region, yeah, they are complaining that if you look at their family ties, there's so much linkages that if you start breaking them, you start creating problems for them. You know, there's wisdom in creating district, creating sometimes. People look at it from a political angle that mm -hmm. you think it will favor you politically. Eventually, <laughs> you do that, and when it comes to that time, realize that, oh, if I left it as it was, probably you have benefited more than what you are doing now. Mm -hmm. So it's very important that when you are doing this thing, you should look at the unity, the unitary state of our country that for a very long time we've lived together. When we start breaking them up into bits and pieces, mm. Is it going to ignore the benefit of our? Because you know, the resources that we have is already limited. Currently, with even what we've got now, mm. we are finding difficult. Oh, no, Thank you, you very up. much, Chairman. <laughs> oh, then so we, have have we have to wrap you up so everyone you know, responds. We, no, no, we, we are finding, we are finding yeah, difficult right. even to maintain what we have. Okay. In Greater Accra, they've created so many districts. Oh, no, but you are up and up. That AMA is no, is, is, it seems to be non existent anymore. Mm. You go to Ayawaso here, Ayawaso district. Okay. You go to Ablekuma, Ablekuma district. You go to the, the, Okay. Thank you and, very and, much, and Chairman. The offices that, where they have to even have offices, they mm -hmm. don't have it. Yeah. Okay. So you Thank, must you. Be very Thank, careful you. Thank you very much. Are doing Most this. careful. Thank you. Eric, right. really briefly. I'm actually quite, I'm even gobsmacked. Listen, the NDC in their 2016 manifesto said they were going to create five new we're regions. Not, we are not doing the way we are doing it. Please. We are not going to do the way you are doing it. Let's not talk about how they are doing it. It's about how the law says you should do it. Let me tell you. 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 I'm happy that this is 2018 and that Ghanaians are extremely more 
they are uh, discerning and we are open and there's mm. information <laughs> and all of those things. Because you see, these guys from that socialist communist uh, <laughs> uh, 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 <laughs> if we were not white <laughs> today, is complaining. we are not white today, today is they, would have, they would have taken <laughs> this country into somewhere else. So? Let me tell what you something. Doing this in their in in manifesto, mm -hmm. they said they were going to create five new regions. Mm -hmm. In ours, we actually said one. Oh. But the right. Constitution, and I'm happy that you are here to mm -hmm. point it out, the Constitution actually stipulates the process that you have Petition. to follow mm -hmm. to go through oh. to form oh, a new my region. Brother. You understand? Tomorrow, this is not the first time. Tomorrow, I write a petition but, that gets yeah, should, write, be, should, and, should be, and it would should follow, be, it would be follow, divided. It would yes. follow. I'm not going to say that. And it will follow. 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 You go, you follow a process to get it done. Apart from that, apart from that, this analogy that if you're going to do a referendum, it is the most illogical, baseless logic ever. We have done, this is not the first time we've done re referendum in this country. Mm -hmm. This is not the first time that mm -hmm. we, how, have, how do we, we do? have voted in this country mm -hmm. regarding regions, uh, regions and, and all that. Do do that. And this is the be this best practice everywhere. This logic that they are coming up with, it's like saying that when the United Kingdom decided that they wanted to get out of the European Union, the whole of Europe should vote, should vote in a referendum mm -hmm. to say that. About? Uh, they can come out but or I not. This is yeah. I mean, no, this is no, 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 and the powers that is given to the committee to actually uh, recommend uh -huh. to government have you, have you and the recommendation yourself. Oh, of course, but that, okay. what is the issue? Thank, 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 thank you very much. So this idea, is it, I wanted, I wanted, I wanted, I was, I wanted hmm. the NDC's official position on the creation of these new regions. And again, they have, they have, they have done what we expected them to do okay. to move away from. What they actually said that they believed in by virtue of okay. political expediency. Thank, no, you. thank you very much. Okay. Chairman, I think you have yeah. Yeah. Chairman of, of uh, Greater Accra, NDC, and of course, Accra Regional Chairman, um, yeah. Eric Awabuchu, yeah. who is a government so spokesperson. And you at home for being with us. This is Breakfast Daily on City TV. Keep those messages coming. We'll be right back. Jakoro Ventures Limited is the web service provider franchised by the AMA to provide services within Osuklote South Metro. We also operate within Zone 2 of the Adentan Municipal Assembly. Our proficient refuse and segregated waste collection crew ensures timely and quality service delivery at every service point. Our friendly management and supervisory staff are always available on call for our cherished clients. We engage and partner organizations to clean up the city and beaches as part of our corporate social responsibility towards making Accra the cleanest city in Africa. Embark on public sensitization and educational outreaches on environmental and sustainable waste management options. We advocate reuse and source operation of waste, paper, plastic, and organic to which value can be added through recycling. Smega 16 award winning company in waste and recycling manufacturing. Implementing partner to Mayor of Accra, initiative on waste segregation in basic schools in Usuklote. Jakora, the waste management professionals. Sapphire, in collaboration with Aqua Safari, present KSM Unchained. <laughs> no, 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 slow down, folks. You see, when it comes to NPP and DC politics, it's pure genetics. It is called, by their names, you shall know them. <laughs> oh, you think I'm lying? Let me mention one name and tell me if you know which party, huh? Okay, take this. Famous Akodonu. <laughs> Unchained and uncensored. December 7th at the National Theatre. Time, 4 and 8 p.m. Rates, 60 Ghana cities flat for 4 p.m. show. 80 Ghana cities regular for 8 p.m. show. For limited VIP 8 p.m. tickets, call 0266-699-249. 0266-699-249. Media Partners.
Sponsors, Ghana National Theatre, Cactus Creek, Fay Gift Shop, Inkit, Food 101, Ticket Outlets, Bachelor Total, Starbite East Ligon, Airport Shell, Silverbed Cinema, Accra Mall, East Cantonment Pharmacy, East Ligon, Ghana National Theatre, Fay Gift Shop, Ebeo Wild Roth, KSM, Unchained and Uncensored. <laughs> They unfold 2020 news all day, all the time. Politics, sports, entertainment, 
business and more. Well, that's all for 2020 News on City TV. All the news in 20 minutes. the part today we step clean styling on a head of flex and i'll use your boy ai still bowling worldwide with it welcome back this is breakfast daily on city tv now uh, last week my co-host and i were talking about the rape culture in this country and how almost every single week we read a story in the newspaper of defilement molestation rape um, as though it's almost become normal now. Has this always been in Ghana or is it a new development? And how do we actually create a society that shames uh, perpetrators of rape instead of making um, excuses for them? I've been joined by F.A. Planch, who is a founding member of Pepperdam Ministry, and Ifwa Sintim, also a founding member of Pepperdam Ministries. They're going to help us really understand that the rape culture in this country and elements that feed into it. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. How are you? Thanks for having us. Oh, thank you. <laughs> good, good. Great work that you're, you're all doing uh, with you. Pepperdam. <laughs> if I'll start with you. Yes. What exactly is rape culture? And so, um, thanks for asking this question because usually when we say rape culture, people think, you know, people take the two words separately. So there's rape and then culture. What is culture? Uh, you know, a society coming together and agreeing on a certain way of life. So then they go like, no, Ghana doesn't have a rape culture. But rape culture is basically and a society that creates a conducive in environment, whether implicitly or explicitly, um, you know, and it creates a certain environment and an atmosphere where rape festers or sexual violence festers. So you don't necessarily have to come out and condone rape because nobody will condone rape. But then it's our attitude towards rape victims and then towards rape uh, perpetrators, uh, our justice systems. How does it deal with victims? How does it make life easier for victims? In Ghana, our justice system frustrates rape victims and their families more than the perpetrators. Mm -hmm. uh, we look at victim blaming. A lot of cases are unreported because of the self-scrutinization that rape victims take themselves through because they're going to be asking the, the, uh, themselves the questions that people will tend to ask when they report. Mm -hmm. But what were you doing there? Why were you wearing what you were wearing? Weren't you calling for it? You know, and all of these things. Mm -hmm. And so, and then we come down to another example, which is a recent example, which is the trivialization of rape through mm -hmm. jokes, through rape jokes. If you are joking about it and you talk about rape and you don't get people to sympathize, to rage about it, to get worried and concerned, but rather to laugh about an issue like rape, then you are adding to Ghana's rape culture. And so these are the elements I would like to talk about, you know, eventually on the show today. And this mm -hmm. is something that we also do talk about um, in platforms. our advocacy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, if well, let me start with you. Have we always had this rape culture or is it something new? No, I think for as long as I can remember, I think rape culture <coughs> has been with us for a very long time. It's seen in the ways in which, you know, we victim blame, we victim shame, slut shaming, rape jokes. You know, and it's sort of normalized to the point where when you rage, when you have issues with rape jokes, people actually think that you're, you're being stuck up. They think that you're talking too much. And it's because it's been normalized. And actually, that is even that itself lays credence to the, the phenomenon of rape culture. And like F.A. said, it's not really, it's not as if our society condones rape per se, but then it is our mindsets, a collective way of, you know, approaching the issue of rape yep. that, you know, makes it um, very, very worrying. If, let let if me I'm ask you if we're a bit. So, I mean, I've, I grew up in Ghana and there's always um, um, an item on rape in our news, especially if you listen to the local uh, uh, radio stations. Mm -hmm. And I grew up, and as young as I can remember, it's always an item there. There's no day that goes by without a reportage on rape. A 72-year-old person raping a 12-year-old, a 45-year-old man raping a 2-year-old or defiling a 2-year-old. And um, for me, what has accounted to this state that we are currently in is even how the reportage is done. Mm -hmm. If you listen to the, I, I schooled for four years in KNUST in Kumasi. If you listen to how the local radio stations cover stories on rape, 
at the end of the day, if you're sitting in a trotter or you're sitting in a tax, uh, taxi, everybody's laughing. You're reporting on rape. And at the end of the day, the, the reaction you, you, you get from people is laughter. Because Why they do are, they laugh? They are over-dramatized. The reporters are over the, the, newscasters the newscasters who are reporting on a particular rape item. A teacher has raped a student. And they are over dramatizing the situation. In a friend, no call ni demo. Then you're catching a sabi bar one, a bi bar two. Like you know, and then they over dramatize the thing. And then at the end of the day, instead of people actually being uh, angry, uh, being angry, angry about it. and being educated and being informed about the reality for young girls uh, and women in Ghana, we are rather laughing. So in the Trotsky, the entire bus is laughing. And this is this accounts to rape culture because it means we live in a society where this is not what moves us. We are we are more moved than uh, uh, by Adenta Footbridge mm -hmm. and you know MPP NDC and other issues than rape. Mm -hmm. And that should tell you the future that we've created for young girls and women in this country. It's not a very good one. How did we get to a point where um, we've almost normalized? not just rape, but all forms of sexual abuse, right? So was there ever a time where as a society we cringed at it? Because legally, my, my co-host mm -hmm. Wilberforce mm -hmm. tells me every time that legally, if someone is sexually harassed and you are aware of it, you, you condone it or you, you stay silent, all of you can go to jail. Mm -hmm. So we mm -hmm. have the documents, but our actions contradict it. How did we normalize I'm, this? I'm this so act? happy you've, 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 you know, you've mentioned this, this dichotomy because it's like it, on paper, um, gender looks good in Ghana. Our gender situation looks good on paper. On there paper. are laws, there are policies, there are whatever, but it doesn't co uh, uh, correlate or co it doesn't transcend with our mindset. Yeah. Send your girl child to school, send your girl child to school. We are sending our girl children to school. Do we have the right mindset to accompany the reality and, and you know, the identity of an empowered, a woman who has been empowered through education? No. Culturally, our mindset doesn't. There's a lot of influence to, uh, too from religion, where even now in a lot of churches, there's serious sexual harassment going on in our churches. Why? So our mindsets need to be shaping and exactly why when we talk on social media people say go underground go to the villages and like people are sitting are sitting on social media you have comedians who have over ten thousand followers mm -hmm. sharing jokes on rape do you so, know so what it, impact it, 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 that it, it, has we'll, on the society we'll get back to you on that one because i really want you to develop it okay but if we're to you um what are some elements right so this, for people at home <coughs> who are watching this, who are unconsciously contributing mm. um, to this rape culture, how do we check our own, you know, um, biases? So let's say you are watching, you know, mm -hmm. you, are, you are in a Trotsky with your little mm -hmm. daughter or your son, and you are laughing at it, but the kid is a victim of abuse, and they can't tell you because they see that mm -hmm. you find That's it funny. funny. What are some of these things that we do that we need to start being conscious of so we also don't contribute to the problem? It starts from the very seamless, harmless things. I always say that, I mean, the, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. You have older men calling little children my wife, my, oh, my kitwa, you know, things like that. And it just gives, you know, a certain false sense of, you know, intimacy, which shouldn't be there because you see a child why why is it sex why do you sexualize a child you know somebody i mean i'm sure people by now would say i've fought with people on social media over this particular issue they see it as a joke you call a little child my my wife and then everybody is fine but one thing we should know is that you know victims of rape and you know defilement harassment and call they all know who their perpetrators are. So it's not they, a stranger. It's yeah. usually not a stranger. You know, we have this, we, we, we look at this whole rape thing as, you know, some bougie man, you know, in the, evil it, some evil person. No, it is the people with us wearing suits and ties. The it's just every, coming yeah, the home, uncles coming the home, the cousins coming the to neighbors. Spend vacation. It's just every, it's just the people around us. Secondly, you're looking at, mothers or let's say families trying to settle um rape cases at home you t and even our police people are complicit in this issue you take a you take a rape case to them and then they're telling you oh wait they said a fear a fear um 
How do I call it? A fiasm, you know, and then they they just wash their hands off it. And then you have to go home and then, you know, they'll pay something to the child's parents and then it's done. We sit on social media, someone is harassed or sexually abused or something, and then you have people asking, where did you, why did you go there? Now, you know, things like that, victim blaming. And what this does is it takes the focus away from the perpetrators to the, the, the victims. Survivor. And I've also made, the, I, oh, I continue to make this point that language is very important. Language is very powerful. We need, even in our reportage, as media people, as journalists, I think it's, it's, it should be a learning, you know, learning curve. curve. You know, our reportage, it ne we need to, you know, change, you know, from that passive voice to the active voice. Instead of saying the girl was raped, no, he raped her. You see, it's, there's just something about language that actually changes your focus. You're saying that, well, he, she was raped, that you're thinking about the victim, then your mind immediately, what is she doing? What was she doing? Mm -hmm. Now, if you said he raped her, then your attention is on the perpetrator. Yes. Then now you start asking questions like, why did he rape her? So I think some of these things are very, very mundane. You know, they are a bit, they look very trivial, but I think that they it contributes a lot, you know, to the this larger culture. picture. Exactly. And this issue about, Rape, um, rape jokes on social media. Look, we've we actually discovered someone, a teacher, a teacher by profession, who sits on social media and he has a documented history of actually telling rape jokes from the point of even sexualizing his teenage as two Student. students. And then he goes on to ask what rape techniques can his followers give to him? And these posts date as far back as 2015. There's evidence of such in 2016. There's evidence of such in 2017 and 2018. So you realize that there is a pattern. And you start asking, so from 2015 till now, not a single soul actually saw anything wrong with it. It actually had to take us and some other, you know, like more enlightened, progressive people to actually draw attention to this. It's sickening, and you have lots of people, you know, actually defending the rights to be able to make rape jokes without consequences. And these are, it, I don't know, but it's... Let me come in here. So I think that the whole point of, for instance, our advocacy is if we can get, um, and this is why we are not very con uh, traditional and very conventional, if we can get people to be very gender sensitive, where is, where, where you know, it comes in place, so I'm going to post something on social media. I have to think, you have to think about the implications of the joke or what it is you're going to say, especially on an issue as rape. What reaction is it going to so elicit in, in my readers and my, in my people? How do I talk about it differently? So it doesn't rather worsen you know, our situation. How can I talk about it so I'm not endorsing it? We want to get to the point where we are so gender sensitive, and that's our very first goal. We can show you our, 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 our executive statement. Our mission statement. It's, you see, it starts from there. You, so you can put in all the policies. We can fight and go on the ground and go to parliament and put in laws and make sure laws are passed. If, as a collective, the media, the advertising uh, uh, companies, Agencies. the corporate institutions who are endorsing some of these uh, uh, celeb celebrities and popular people on social mm -hmm. media, you and I, musicians. if we are, if, if we are musicians, you know, in their lyrics and their songs, if all of us as a collective are not gender sensitive, then whatever efforts we're going to make by law, it's not going to work. If the police... So, so how do we become gender sensitive? Right? Start so, talking. First of all, it starts from accepting, first of all, that there's a problem. It's accepting that we have a problem. It's accepting that Ghana has a rape culture. Then identifying what the elements are and then starting conversations on it. Mm -hmm. It starts with conversations, asking questions, debating, very honest debates and not oh, I can't express myself anymore. No, some things we should know what opinions are, what, what can pass as opinions. Mm -hmm. And we should also know and be able to identify what can come off as dangerous and toxic mindsets. So how important is it for us to call out people who do wrong things? So person might not be a rapist, but mm -hmm. if they are entertaining it, right? Exactly. Like somebody saying, oh, now all women want attention because they all want to do Me Too. 
-hmm. So if the person is your father or your brother, how important is it to call them out and say, this is wrong? So that we begin to point out the people who are doing the wrong thing as opposed to constantly, you know, um, blaming the victim, but actually mm -hmm. letting them also yeah, check sure. their problems. Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, when, you, when we talk about rape, which is, you know, a, a serious issue, the average man, the average Ghanaian man doesn't see himself as a rapist. The average, I mean, um, and I, we keep referring to men because the statistics show that men, uh, men are more likely to rape. Yeah, but and there's also the statistics likely. of a yes. lot of men, men being raped, raped by women. By and women. society doesn't even create an enabling environment, environment even the law. for them to even the law doesn't speak up that I was sexually yes. harassed yeah. as a child. Boils, that also boils down to the rape culture because, you see, we have developed that culture where bare man, yeah. you know, as a man, you have to be strong, you have to be, you know, you have to be masculine, let me just mm -hmm. put it that way. So the moment you tell somebody that you have been sexually abused or harassed, then they're going to laugh at you. You have children who are actually sexualized, I mean, sexually harassed by maid servants and mm -hmm. things Babysitters. like that. Babysitters. Mm -hmm. yeah. Look, last week we had, um, we had a gender sexual, class, harassment. sexual harassment class at Game Park. One lecturer, Dr. Jemima Nunu, invited us to take her class to their, one of their corporate um, sessions. And one of the ladies actually said that her child actually reported to her that her maid servant, whom she had sent away, was, has been, oh, mommy, auntie, blah, 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 says, said I should come and then, you know, touch her, suck touch her breasts. breasts. You know, and this is a child, if this isn't, <laughs> corrected. If this, is, is, if this isn't corrected, and, and the yeah. child just let me, grows if I, let up. Me not cut, mm -hmm. Let me cut you. Yeah. Let and me and your, cut you. Your, your concluding statement as yes. well as where people can find out more information about... Good. You know, let me just wrap yeah. up quickly on what she was saying. So when we raise the issue of boys being raped too, mm -hmm. people come and tell us that, oh, as for boys, it's different because, I mean, it's a, it's a rite of passage for them. No, it's not. And, and they, mm -hmm. they, they like it. I mean, which man wouldn't like to be given sex on them? So we also need to change our mindsets around Mm -hmm. men's sexuality yeah. and women's sexuality and then the language around that but then we'll quickly wrap up we've been talking about sexual harassment for over a year on the pepper ministry's official facebook page mm -hmm. please come on there and come and join the conversation um as i said the the issue we can start solving it by identifying and accepting that we have a rape culture and we do have a rape culture there's so much information and statistics to, to show that we have a rape culture. So let's first get to that point of acceptance and then start talking about it. And we are ready to educate, we are ready to engage. Um, and I think that that's where we can take Thank it from. You. Yeah, Thank you. Thank you so much, ladies. Thank uh, you. I, I was joined by Efe Plant, who is a founding member of Pepperdam Ministries, and Ifwa Sintem, also founding member of Pepperdam Ministries. Do not go anywhere. Um, up next, we're going to play with some healthy snacks. So, uh, it's, of course, we have nutritionists. Our nutritionist, Akosia, joined us on Monday. So, we're going to learn some health tips from her. Um, we'll be right back. <coughs> TV is live. City TV is a free to air digital channel. On a digital TV, please press menu on your remote control and run a new search on your TV. Take note that without an antenna, you cannot access City TV on your television. City TV can be accessed on a multi TV digibox. Tune into City TV and experience your world. City TV. It's your world. I know about that photo. Same team, Titia, who I go talk to. Yeah. This is Kwesiata, and you're watching Breakfast Daily. Ground up to the top. Boy. Yeah. Good morning, Ghana. Good morning, world. You're into into the breakfast daily on City TV. Stone Boy says so. Keep it locked. Don't log off. Boom.
come dance to the beat. Bend down, bend down, shoulder, shoulder. What's up, everyone? My name is Miss V. Right now, you are watching Breakfast Daily. Don't go anywhere. Tiptoe swag. Hi, good morning. My name is Michelle Atta. You're tuned in to Breakfast Daily on City TV. Good morning. I know do them many things, yeah. She was saying, yeah, and I had them. If you wish me fire, then go to hell. What's up with your rockstar, Kwame Eugene? Keep watching City TV Breakfast Daily. Don't go anywhere. Rockstar. Yeah. Okay. Welcome, Welcome back. back. This is Breakfast Daily on yeah. City TV. It was an interesting discussion <laughs> you were having on rape and, and, yeah. and uh, you know, sexual assault of all forms. Yeah. And I was, I just... I'll just point into the fact that, you know, putting our laws together, it's true that it appears there's no uh, specific law, especially in Act 29, on men being raped. It doesn't seem and to be there. it's very important. It's very important. We, we, we. Sadly, um, Section 98 of the Criminal Offences Act says that it defines rape as um, the carnal knowledge of a female of uh, over 20, of over 16 years. Wow. So it appears that it has specifically said female. Under, under 16. Over, over 16. 16. Under 16 will be defilement. So okay. it, 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 it's sad. It's wow. just sad that men we were not include included in there. And this law since 1960 has not mm -hmm. been amended. Yeah. That's sad. It's 1960 yeah. has not been amended. Anyway, so while we are looking at the right to information bill, maybe we should take a look at that particular provision as well. But for now, we have been joined by your, by, I said by, by your favorite state registered nutritionist. I want to give you some wild intro, Thank you know. She deserves it. She, she deserves it, definitely. She's definitely. I'm, I'm moved by the introduction of uh, last night's boxing game, Tyson Fury and uh, Wilder. It was amazing. Last <laughs> night, last two nights. It was, it was just fantastic. So we've been joined by the state registered nest uh, nutritionist. <laughs> Akosia Kunedu Yado. Good morning. Good morning, Akosia. How are you? Yeah. I'm fine, thank you. What so, are we doing today? Well, we are talking about healthy snacks. Okay. Ah. Yes, lunch, uh, brunches, mm. snacks, mm -hmm. or in betweens. Ah, okay. so that's why we have all these goodies around here. Yep. Yes. Okay. Hey. So what do we start with? Okay. Um, let's talk about um, snacks. healthy snacks in yeah. general. Mm. Well, when you when you get to meal planning or for any person, any human being, the sick. The convalescent, the invalid, the the fit ourselves mm. and anybody we are to eat five times in a day. But I'm coming to break it down. We have our normal breakfast. Mm -hmm. Then we come to a snack before lunch. Normally we call it brunch. So mm. uh, a white man will go will go like I'm going for a coffee break. Mm -hmm. But we don't normally do mm. some of these things. So we take our breakfast. Then we take a snack. Mm -hmm. But because of the time, normally, I will call it a brunch. But normally, brunches are taken when you know that you wouldn't be taking breakfast and lunch. Ah. If you are involved in a crunch meeting, if you're a very busy person, normally, brunches are given brunch. because it's supposed to hmm. take care of your breakfast and then your and lunch. that has to be healthy as well. I don't recommend that one alone, but when it becomes necessary, you'd have to do it. So it has to be really planned well to make sure that you are getting everything you need for the day because if you are going on a brunch where you are boxing in breakfast and lunch for brunch, it means that you are just going to have dinner or supper. And mm. so it means that whatever you are brunching with has to be filled with mm. all the goodness you need for the day. So between your lunch and supper or dinner too, you need a snack. Mm. What a snack does is that it cushions you and makes sure that you have some good nutrients for mm. instance when it comes to ascorbic acid uh -huh. or from the citric family if you take pineapple if you take an orange just an orange you mm. are getting 100 milligrams mm. of ascorbic acid and that is your daily um, um, need as far as the citric um, family is concerned so an orange a day will give you that goodness but when you pick some of these foods or fruits or vegetables, you get them in mini minimal dosages. So when it comes to oranges, I always prefer you going for orange or 
pineapple. Mm. And so that's what snack, snacks they do. And these and things are good for your body? They are very good. Yeah, ascorbic um, acid. Something like, well, if you have no condition, for mm. instance, if you don't... Like ulcer? You, ulcer and gastric-related issues. Mm. Even with that, you can take it. I will let it be your, your second snack mm. than going in for it, as in involving it in a branch. For instance, let's say I have ulcer. Hmm. And today I want to do um, um, a brunch. I won't go for orange juice. Ideally, hmm. I won't let you go for it. I won't go for it. I hmm. prefer to go on another thing so that I allow my tummy to settle That's as far right. as getting some of these reactions are concerned. But most of the times we get away with it and so we don't, we don't listen to our body. I always hmm. tell people, listen to your body. I am telling you that yogurt is good. Purpose are good, but it doesn't mean that yogurts are going to work for every one of us. Do you mm. get it? Okay. I take bean stew, but if you mix, I don't know why. I, somebody told me, because you are not even you are missing out. I was like, I don't know if it Wait, has to do with the gari, ah. the beans, and the oil, and that maybe that's stirring that. There's a problem with the, the beans and the gari and the oil. When I eat those, those, combi those mm. three combination mm -hmm. they call locally gobe if i eat it i my my i i will i will run i will be running i will have an upset but i take beans to you and i'm okay so you just have to listen to your body i never waited for somebody to tell me i never waited to become a registered nutritionist mm -hmm. before i told myself that my body doesn't accept it i listen to my <laughs> Sorry, body i just want clarity for the sake of our viewers I, I, are you saying there's a problem with beans and gyro? You're just saying for you. Yeah, just, for me. Okay. For me, Fantastic. because I realize that it's probably because some people add um, salt and pepper, what we call cow mm. That's the, the English. Uh, and the English is what? <laughs> salt words. <laughs> hey. Some say pita, pepper. Ah, okay. P E T R E. Okay. Ah. So it's probably because of that. Somebody was like, hey, bia, we mm. So for some people, I, 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 I kind of understand or get it because if I am eating a particular food and I have much of that in it, I, I realize that my mm. tummy you, you, you know, you know I take beans and when I, when I take beans, I always have tummy upset unless I take it with Coca-Cola. Mm. That's, that's a problem. Is, that's, that's wrong? So with then you have to switch. Drinks? Yes, you just have to because I, I don't vote for carbonated drinks. When mm. we discuss yeah. juices and drinks, an issue. it's really, it's not healthy. Mm. There is nothing healthy about it. Okay. So, okay. so no yes. beans mixed so with carbonated drinks. An orange a day, mm. let's say as your snack, is giving you everything you need as okay. far as a So what do we have? What are some of the ingredients we have here? I can see pineapple. I can see purple. Okay. There's another fancy fruit. If I mention a name, I have no idea what it is. Plum. <laughs> plum. Ah. Is plum. It? Let's remove the tissue for the benefit of our viewers. Okay, okay. so we have purple here. We have a um, few slices of pineapple. Hmm. And then we have um, yogurt. It, ah. can be, it can be a snack. So this yogurt will pass for a portion. Yes, and sometimes you can also twist it. We have... Is we it have Greek yogurt or just regular yogurt? It's vanilla and strawberry. Ah, okay, the yeah. yogurt vanilla. So it's not like yes. the so fancy we have, we have strawberry. ones. It's like natural no, no, yogurt. No, 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 no. Yes, it's vanilla. We have vanilla and strawberry. So if you can't enjoy what we have here and would have to do it mm -hmm. um, in the house, you should make sure that I told you about reading of labels. So you should read your labels and know what is sitting in what you have <laughs> so yes we have vanilla we have um, strawberry and then we have um, cheese yes so you should make sure that you are choosing something nice there is a name but i i can i go on and mention the, the no brand? i mean it's, it could be cheddar cheese or just regular yes, yellow yes, cheese, yes, right? yes so okay. cheddar cheese or just like jifa said so that i don't end up <laughs> mentioning somebody uh, i'm doing promotion it's coming hey uh, so there's what do we do now yeah so well you can enjoy it on, the, uh, on your own, okay. yes. So for the popo, you can get one fourth slice of the whole popo. If it's the medium size, you can do one fourth. If it's the bigger size, you can do one sixth or one eighth. Hmm. But these ones have already been cut, and so in as much as I would want you to push them down, I don't also want you to overdo it. Mm -hmm. ah. So yes, you can you can twist it because if you go, for instance, I was talking about oranges mm -hmm. for the ascorbic acid. Mm -hmm. If you go beyond thousand milligram, mm -hmm. you can have shocks. Wow! In as much as yes, so we have people who can go for a bucket of mango and go like, how can I enjoy two? mangoes three mangoes just an orange will give you what you need for the day 
as mm. far as ascorbic acid is concerned. So if you go 1,000, it means that even with 1,000... Is, is there a relation between ascorbic acid and vitamin C? Yeah, so if, for instance, you can't take it, like I spoke about the fact that um, my grandmother has ulcer, you have ulcer, I have ulcer. Let's say we, we have ulcers. Mm. It means that we, there should be a dilution hmm. of some of these things. If I okay. squeeze orange juice, I should be able to dilute. Hmm. Or if it's becoming so difficult for me to reach my daily requ uh, requirements or okay. my DRI, it hmm. means that I have to um, um, look for another alternative. Hmm. Or if I so want to do it, I have to dilute. If you go beyond it, because one orange is even 130 milligram, it means that you've gone beyond the 100. And by diluting, you mean just pour a bit of water yes, in there? Yes, so you pour okay. a bit you say of we water get, in We shouldn't there. take more it's than 1,000 a day. It's not for everybody. Mm. Okay. It's not for everybody. So if you go 7, 8, 10 oranges in a day, you are abusing it. And for some people, they can have a, a nausea. They can have nausea. They can vomit. And then they have bloody stool, sorry, mm. or urine. Mm. And then for some people, in the worst scenario, it hardly happens. They, you can pass out. Mm. Wow. So for the benefit of our viewers, I'm just going to let them know the portions we have here. So one-fourth pineapple, a medium-sized pineapple, mm -hmm. if you want to make this at home. We also have a half of a medium-sized pawpaw, mm -hmm. um, one full medium-sized plum, um, we have cheese, four slices, cheddar cheese, ed Adam cheese, four slices, cheddar cheese, four slices, yogurt, um, 125 grams, half is um, vanilla, and then the other is um, strawberry. So those are the things that we have here on, 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 on our table. So mm. we will, we will Akosia, walk us through what we're going to do. Okay. So, I just want to add a twist to it mm. so that we can at least enjoy. Okay. Yeah. And so, I, I need help or you're fine. <laughs> Would you? It looks lovely. <laughs> it's for Jifa and myself. <laughs> no, Easy. today, today Woman, he's, oh, you're, today, you're, today, today he's trying it. Affirmative <laughs> action. Pepper them with, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He'll try it today. So, we are mixing some of the pineapple, mm, yep. pawpaw, plum together. So, we, we started mm. off with the fruits. Then, uh, what do we this do? This looks really good already. The um, strawberry or? Uh, uh, vanilla is fine. I'm making ah. it for Wilberforce. I, I want to, I want to, I want to celebrate him today. <laughs> <laughs> today, I want to put him first because it's the month of love. Yeah. So you put, you put your yes. partners Just first. Just a bit December of, is the month a, of love a and bit giving. Of it. <laughs> I mean, you're gratitude. supposed to do it one Why do you add the time. cheese? I just want you to have a good time. So Okay. Today, I'm going to allow him to cheat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so this is, this is the kind of meal you have for a cheat day. Or? Oh, Jifa, do you have to say this? Oh, yeah, no. Yeah. I mean, I'm just making sure. If you're eating healthy food every, yes, so, every, every day, then you, you know, yes. today. Okay, today, I she just want to She knows it. Why are you mixing a thing? She knows it. Are we supposed to mix it? I want so, you yeah. to feel, feel the goodness. Okay, go for so it. So I can, okay. Should I feed you or you're fine? Oh, good. I'm good. Thank okay. you very much. It would be nice to be fed anyway. So <laughs> I knew the purple was going to slide. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, how mm. is it? It's lovely. Try, try it with a bit of cheese. Okay. It will fall down. If I try with the cheese, <laughs> no, it will open, fall down. My mouth cannot be this wide. <laughs> My mouth cannot be okay, this wide. It's fine. <laughs> so what I can do for you is, because I care about you so much, I'll divide the cheese. Aww. Yeah. And then I'll give it to you with a bit of cheese. No, no, no. You, you, you. Today's <laughs> all you. It's all me. All you. Okay. I, I want our viewers to see that you're very open-minded <laughs> and you like to try new things. Okay. Yeah, and so I want like, our to see as well. I, I would want <laughs> you to do, um, if, it's, if it's pineapple, you do pineapple, you do pawpaw. But hmm. because you can't, I just want to put some star into it. Okay, hmm. today you took pineapple. Yeah. Tomorrow you'll be taking um, pawpaw. Mm. Okay, so mm. once in a week, if I give you this goodness, you can... Just enjoy it with a spoon of vanilla ice cream. Ah. Or, yes. Mm. So once in a week, I'm not saying do it all the time. Every day. Please. I beg you, Ghana. <laughs> but it's amazing with the cheese. You should try it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah, yeah. You, also, yeah you should try it. So <laughs> don't do this all the time because, uh, um, please, this is, this is too much. <laughs> but so what are why? the nutritional benefits of this? Fruits in general, Jifa, they give you, um, um, they, they, for instance, building of immunity. As, mm. Aside the fact that I spoke to you about um, what um, glucose does to our body, being our body's fuel, fruits and vegetables are loaded with vitamins, 
and vitamins you know especially even in the in the, in the uh, for pregnant women it builds the child up like mm -hmm. nutrients from the umbilical cord to the babies there are some essential macro and micronutrients you get from fruits and vegetables so mm -hmm. because of how our main meals are prepared you end up destroying a lot of nutrients in there mm. and so it's advisable for us to be taking fruits mm -hmm. and vegetables so that we can at least be sure that we are getting everything we need as far as citric acid is concerned for okay. example in purple you know, yeah. and then oranges mm -hmm. yes now for those people who are lactose intolerant are they substitutes they can use or they can also have this and they'll be fine okay so if you have that and you mm. you can't enjoy these goodness the, the yogurt Take the fruit. <laughs> and call it a day. Yes, or drink coconut juice. <laughs> I'm finishing it down. You're finishing it, please. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. He's, he's really enjoying himself today. <laughs> it's, it's always it's nice. nice. That's what I'm saying. That don't, don't be doing this once a week is allowed. But okay. You shouldn't be doing it And, and we have this famous cheese that we eat here in Ghana. I realize we don't have it here. Can you use that as a substitute as well? The, the cheese that they usual, the That's usual bread. The one you put in your bread every morning. Is that the one we should, uh, That's we should saying, prefer this over you that? Should, these ones are very healthy. Yes, you should read what you are buying. Mm -hmm. Like you should read the labels. We mm -hmm. don't read the nutritional facts. Mm -hmm. we, we don't. We don't see the tips. We, we don't read anything. We just left it. Oh, I I want cheese. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can find cheese here. We just left it. Sometimes you even compare the prices. We cry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we 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 it. It. That's but not we really really don't pay attention to. The nutritional so fat. what should we look out for by yeah. way of nutritional whatever i'm saying the that when you are buying a commodity and you have sodium hmm. sitting in there it means that there is excess sodium because before you can preserve like canned foods mm -hmm. before you can preserve them you'd have to use brine mm. that is basically hmm. salt solution hmm. Hmm. yeah so if you are already doing this to the product and you have sodium sitting in so like double there, sodium it means that because are you trying to say that for using tin tomatoes jifa you won't add a spice Fresh, yeah. or yeah. salt to your stew mm -hmm. but there is salt sitting in the tin the tomatoes thing. but wow. after cooking so excess sodium is not good for you excess of everything is no it's good. not good yeah okay but the salt we use only small <laughs> you use more. No, like sodium yeah, people who, who, who pour salt like this. They just ah. pour the whole <laughs> thing in they there. Pour, they don't measure. <laughs> but ideally, you're supposed to measure. Before because you pour with it. our preparations, we, we don't just pour, pour anything. We, we actually calculate. Of this. We've tried this with um, strawberry. Would it be nice with vanilla as well? You want me to do vanilla for you too? No, I'm Please. just asking. <laughs> Would that be nice with vanilla? We'll, just we'll, a do question. With vanilla. we'll do it with vanilla for mm. you. Anything for you, Wilbur for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but Hosea, yeah, tell us the importance of this in the middle, like the importance of healthy brunch and mm. not just eating anything unhealthy because you've had your healthy breakfast, then you mm -hmm. go on and chug your face with a lot of carbs. How important is it to be mindful of our snacks as well? Like I told you, they, they supply our bodies with some amount of nutrients and then uh, they're pushing you jifa mm -hmm. for instance i took my breakfast around um, eight mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then i know that my lunch will be in at one or mm -hmm. one thirty it ideally mm -hmm. that that the time is 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 wide and so you need to cushion your, your, yourself. Your, yourself so that you are not even tempted to overeat what mm -hmm. happens is that we sometimes eat when we are hungry yeah. and so we are tempted to overeat and so when you take some of these things or when you snack when you go on healthy snacking it cushions you for the next meal that's why we say that you have to eat five times in a day normally when you tell people you have to eat five times in a day oh we're doing so mm -hmm. to me but your in-betweens are two your breakfast lunch. your snack or mm -hmm. brunch your lunch then dinner. another snack, snack before, before dinner. dinner. That is And fine. that helps you so you don't have uh, so big portions so of lunch and dinner. So when it's time for you to eat your lunch, Jifa, you just took an apple two hours ago. Mm -hmm. And so there is this cushioning. You don't even feel for it, but you don't eat because you, 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 you are hungry. Mm -hmm. You eat because you need to give your body some glucose. Wow. Yeah, so it does. Let me give you these two it gives you some nutrients as far as whatever fruit you are consuming is concerned. Mm -hmm. And it is only, sometimes, only present in that fruit. Wow. Yes. And then, two, it cushions you and prevents you from overeating mm. when it comes to your next meal. Wow. Akosia, thank you. Thank you so much. So, we've learned about healthy snacks and brunch. So, again, we have five meals a day. 
three main meals and then two snacks. And we want to make sure that the snacks that we're having are very healthy and we're not just taking unhealthy snacks. Um, let's, I hope you guys will try it at home and let us know what your thoughts are. And always keep in mind the portions as well, yes, right? So very, don't very, just very chug everything in. Be mindful of the portions. And a quick one, please. Mm -hmm. um, if you would want to do oranges in a day, you can go one or two. Mm, don't go beyond don't that. Don't go beyond it. Okay. I told you, if you go eight, ten, but if you want to abuse it, allow yourself three or four. But <laughs> please, ideally, it's one or oh, two. two. Okay. So don't go beyond it. Okay. I beg you, so that you don't have tummy upsets, you don't have um, um, no nausea, and then you don't end up passing out, please. We need you to be watching CTTV. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Akosia Thank Akonedu you so Yadom, much, who is a state-registered nutritionist. Now, I'm going to go through the portions again with you guys. We had uh, uh, one-fourth size of a medium-sized pineapple. We had a half of a medium-sized pawpaw and um, one medium-sized plum. Edam cheese, four slices. Cheddar cheese, red and uh, red or yellow. That was also four slices, and of course, yogurt. For us, we used mm -hmm. vanilla and mm -hmm. strawberry, but you can use any one of these. You don't have to have all of them. Just just mix them up for this goodness of, of a snack that uh, my co-host just had. And speaking of my co-host, Roboforce. Yes. So um, the the meal is being enjoyed without me, but I'm hoping if I would still uh, save me some. Lovely, lovely. You can trust our Kusia Kunedu Yadom for something healthy and still very delicious every Monday on uh, Breakfast Daily. Oh, good breakfast. Anyway, I've been joined by Casey. Casey's a young man who has been singing for us since the show uh, started. Very, very fantastic voice, excellent vocals. Casey, good morning. Welcome to Breakfast good Daily. Good morning. Good mm. morning. It's good to have you here. Same here. It's, it's I'm good. humbled to be here, dog. You are? Trust me. And we are humbled to have you here. Thanks, man. What's the real name, though? Well, my real name is Kwesi Nyakon Owusu Setre. Kwesi Nyakon Owusu Setre. Yes. But when I was in Achimoto school, I... Mm. I don't know. My friends started calling me Casey. Ah, you went to Motown. Eh? Exactly. Ah, which year? Uh, you don't. Have, you, don't. <laughs> you went to Motown. And and yeah. So when I was in school, mm. um, they were calling me Casey. Were you like in a school choir as well? I wasn't in this, but I was in an SU choir. Mm. Yeah. But you were it's singing. Best, yeah, I was singing. I started singing around um, the second year. Mm. Yes. And so when I started music as a professionally, mm. I took that and added a bit of my real name to give it an identity. Ah. So it's Casey always here. Yes. Casey. And you've been doing this uh, since Motown? Since Motown. Since Motown. And did you ever consider going professional, even at the time you were, you were at uh, Chimota? For me, at first, it was just a hobby, you know, and mm. like seven. For me, it was just seven in school. And then when I come back home to my church, I'm the worship leader in my church. Oh, wow. Yes. Wh which church is that? Um, PIWC, mm. Pentecost. Um, at Atomic, so mm -hmm. that's where I, I fellowship as well. So for me, it was just seven, and then the Lord just took it to another level with I me mean, recording and um, yeah, traveling and pe performing around. Yes. Yeah. So commercially, you've been doing this for about how long? I um, mean, outside the church. Outside the church, say since 2010 hmm. to now. Yes. And it's good. By the grace of Very God. Very rewarding. Um, gradually. <laughs> <laughs> So what's your focus? There. What's your focus when you're doing or when you're singing mm -hmm. or when you're recording in the studio? What's, what's your focus? Are you thinking about how I'm going to pay my bills or how I'm going to use God's given talent to, you know, bless his people? Um, for me, I, my purpose is growing up, I, had, I struggled with few things. So whenever I'm writing, mm. I, I think about what someone is going through mm. and how my personal story can affect you them. want to touch on these briefly um yes i had challenges growing up in academics mm. wise and then some health issues as well and i feel that these are certain challenges that people go through naturally and so um when i'm writing that becomes an inspiration to mm. and on top of that to reconcile people to god basically so that has been the motivation going on yeah mm. you've spoken about your role in the church how yeah. do you describe your role in life you know, based on your talent and based on what you have. Okay. How do you, you know, your God-given purpose, mm. what would you say that is? Well, I love that. Everybody is unique in, in mm. their own way. And I, I, for me, I don't necessarily look at the masses. I look at making impact and affecting the small corners. So for me, um, I think that God just brought me here to reconcile people to him mm. through music. Mm. And 
this type of genre, though, that is neo soul and R&B. Hmm. Not that I cannot do the regular type, but I think I grew up, my orientation on music, I started listening to Brian McKnight, with the Vandro stuff, so it shaped my sound. Hmm. And I feel like there are people that have this kind of feel, but they don't have an alternative. So I am providing that alternative in the Christian dog. Yeah. Fantastic. Now, moving forward, what should we look forward to? Okay, Casey. so um, I have a new song called mm -hmm. Adom. That's what I'm wearing yeah. here. And we have a video out. By the mm. grace of God, we shot it in Bremen, Germany. Oh, wow. And um, so they should check us out, Casey Ohusu, mm. on YouTube. Um, we are coming out with an EP called From Mara to Elim. It's a beautiful From, Mara. From Mara to Elim. Yes. What, what does that mean? I'm sure it, it <laughs> has scripture. biblical connotations. Yes, connotation. definitely. Mara is it's, it's a place of disappointment. It's a mm. place of regret. Mm. It's a place of sorrow, sort of. And Elim is a place of abundance, joy, um, influence, whatever. So there's a transition from that Mara old state. Yeah, so it is deep. And a lot of people are helping to write the EP out. And I can't wait for you to listen. To I'll personally bring you a copy. You out. should. You yes. should. Please do. If you don't, I'll be really upset with you. <laughs> I will. Okay. I will. Now, uh, your social media handles. See if people want to hear more from Casey. How okay. do they reach you? So on YouTube, it's Casey mm -hmm. K A Y S I O W U S U. That's on mm -hmm. YouTube. And the same with um, Instagram and Facebook. And on Twitter, it's Casey Music. Hmm. Yeah, and then you can get my songs on SoundCloud, forward slash Casey Owusu, Reverb, forward slash Casey Owusu, and www.caseyowusu.com, yes. K-A-Y-S-I, that's Casey, and uh, you can attest to the fact that he is fantastic. Thank his you. performance, his everything, everything is just so fantastic. Uh, so we'll have you perform again for us before you yeah. go. Please. And shout-outs to my guitarist. Though. Please, quick shout-out. Let me give you a chance to give <laughs> three people shout-outs. Okay, to my guitarist. It's called Geshon. He's an amazing guy. Mm. He's a writer as well. And then to my church. They've been mm. supportive from day one. PIWC Atomic. I love you guys. And my family, mm. they've, been, they've been holding me down for years. When you're going wrong, they tell you, hey, you're going wrong. This is getting to you. So they've been like that anchor that mm. has been keeping me going. I, I thank everybody. And all my fan supporters, people that have been praying for me. Hey, mm. thank you for being there. Thank you very much, Casey. Now, stay tuned. Breakfast Daily continues. I know about that photo. Same team, Titi, who I go talk to. Yeah. This is Chris Yatta, and you're watching Breakfast Daily. Ground up to the top. Boy. Yeah. Good morning, Ghana. Good morning, world. You're in tune to the Breakfast Daily on CTTV. Stone Boy says so. Keep it locked. Don't log off. Beep. Hi, good morning. My name is Michelle Atta. You're tuned in to Breakfast Daily on CTTV. Good morning. Jealousy go shame against the bag boy. Jealousy go shame. Whoa. What's up, guys? Your boy Kitty, and right now you are watching Breakfast Daily. Oh, Lord of mercy. Let's go. Welcome back. Yeah. This is Breakfast Daily on City TV. Mm. Thank you guys so much for being with us on yeah. this first day of. Uh, first Monday, Monday of, December. of December. So December, this due to I just around the corner and other events. Thank yes, you December all so much. December to remember. Mm -hmm. Big shout out to Prosper from Sharp Grooming. <laughs> now we leave you in the able hands of Casey. Thank Casey you. also do your thing. Take it away. for 
lost and wandered I've tasted of your power Oh, only share you You've shown me so much mercy Much more than I deserve We say, my nights have seen My needs have heard The wonders of your praise Creation bows in all of you, and we join to give your praise. The words you speak turn things around. Your wild stretches has lifted me. You took away the chain. Mercy, much more than I deserve. 